All right. Good evening to you all. Day six finish line uh, for the Scooter Cannonball Run. Uh, we're here at the Comfort Inn and Suites, which is the official check-in hotel. And the PCX made it under its own power today. Zero mechanical problems, I'm happy to report. Uh, it's running great. So thanks uh, to everybody that helped me get it here. <laughs> uh, there were uh, uh, multiple complications and a new complication from day three that I'm a little annoyed about. I'm going to see if I can get it resolved. Uh, basically, my scorecard didn't get finalized out after all that nonsense that I went through. Sitting in the, the high plains desert, wherever the heck I was, changing the uh, belt uh, on the scorching pavement. And yeah, uh, I didn't get any points for that whole day. I'm a DNF for day three, which should not happen because I got to the hotel. I did all my photos. I checked in by 1045 p.m. So uh, I'll see if I can figure out how to resolve that. Otherwise, uh, the scoot ran great today. No problems. Uh, I was running wide open, uh, almost full to the stop all day long. And... Uh, you can see me in the reflections here. I'm uh, I'm Grizzly Adams right now, everybody. I, I haven't shaved since uh, day one of the uh, cannonball, and I, I need a razor. <laughs> uh, but full tilt buggy on the highways. I don't know if that comes out on camera. I'm trying to get it in there close enough. I don't know if you guys are able to see it or not. 94.4 miles to the gallon. So it's a little bit lower now with the factory variator. Uh, you know, it's to be expected because of the uh, lower ramp profile. Uh, fuel economy is a little lower. Top speed is lower. I'm a 63, 64 bouncing off the factory rev limiter, but uh, yeah, otherwise ran great. No problems. Uh, I have my climbing power back that I haven't had in a very long time now. So that's a very welcome addition to my uh, long cross country ride. Uh, having a little aerodynamic difficulties, but we won't discuss that today. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, everybody made it in. I don't think we had any real problems today. There was one report of a rider that hit a deer and broke his collarbone. So we do have one more confirmed or somewhat confirmed casualty in the event. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to sort out, but we'll find out. I don't see Neil yet. He may not have made it in. Uh, we were running in a, a fast group, uh, my PCX and two ADV 150s for a long time. And then uh, Ron Rumpf uh, joined in with us a little later on his PCX 150, and we were all crushing pretty fast. Uh, we did a bunch of gravel uh, that was not on, the, uh, not on the map today, or it wasn't disclosed that we had gravel, and we were, we were doing pretty good. We were moving along 35, 40 miles an hour on the gravel. We are doing okay. Didn't eat it, no problems, no breakage on our side. Uh, we picked up somebody's lost uh, one-gallon fuel can that looked almost identical to that one right there. Uh, we don't know who it belongs to. We're going to find out. But our uh, finder's fee for that is we used the one gallon of fuel that was in it. <laughs> we, uh, we appropriated it for our use, but we'll give them their can back. Uh, otherwise, uh, a lot of scoots made it. Uh, I haven't really uh, chatted with anyone yet. Uh, that's the the main man right there. And I'm going to, I'm going to bug him in a minute, but, uh, that is, uh, the infamous Dave, the, uh, mastermind behind all this madness. So any questions? I'm going to go through, uh, comments, go Ron. Yeah. Scooters, et cetera. Hey, yeah. Ron did uh, great today and he's able to outrun me. Uh, that 2013 has got taller final drive gears in it. And, uh, he gained, he said that he thinks six or eight miles an hour today from the belt change last night. So uh, he said he was previously topping out right at 60 miles an hour. Today he was getting 67, 68 on the open road. And I can confirm that with video uh, when I was topped out at 64, 65 bouncing the rev limiter and he's still walking away. So go Ron. Uh, the belt sounds great, Kevin, but uh, his clutch is definitely foobar. It's going to be going out. We just don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, he said it's been making that scraping noise for a while now, you know, 5,000 miles or something, but it's getting worse. Uh, he's definitely got a dragging clutch shoe in there. Uh, and if it doesn't have proper tension, that's probably what's building up all the heat on the clutch bell and bluing that thing, turning it into a uh, molten pile of metal eventually. So anyway, uh, he's got somebody that's helping him uh, fix that up tomorrow. Uh, they're bringing a new uh, NCY clutch, spring, everything. So they'll just change out that rear uh, portion and should be good to go. Look, for anybody else I missed, uh, Dino, yes, man, you are the man. 
it's back up and running, uh, ran full tilt boogie all day long, no problems. It is absolutely fantabulous. Uh, speed I was averaging uh, was uh, rev limiter all day, pretty much. Uh, s between 62 and 64 all day long. Uh, only let out of it occasionally when I was overrunning uh, the other guys uh, that were in front of me. So uh, it ran great, ran great. Uh, hey, Gus, full tilt boogie. You got it, baby. It ran good. Uh, it's uh, not quite our uh, Rebel 1100 uh, rev limiter, 99-100, 99-100, 99-100. That would be fun, but I'd get myself in trouble out here, I'm sure. Take you inside the lobby for a moment. Uh, hey, Dirt Rider. Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I will definitely do the checkpoint, so I'll see you at the Napier bonus checkpoint. If you, here's the scoring table and these kind folks. Um, if you uh, check my live tracking map, my GPS tracker on the live stream, you'll see where I am. Coffee. I think I could do a coffee. Why not? It's hot out there, but I need more liquid. Okay, it's a double cup. Where else can you watch a guy getting coffee on camera? Oops, not quite. Almost getting coffee. Almost not getting coffee. There it goes. Hard to do with one hand. Okay. See if I can maneuver three things at once. Dave, thank you for the congrats. I still need to get uh, your autograph from GoPam. We'll find her. This fine lady here is doing a documentary on the uh, cannonball. I'm not going to bug her. She's talking. Uh, her husband is participating in the event, and she is a professional videographer. Uh, she was a news anchor. I uh, didn't catch what station, but she said for 11 or 12 years she was a news anchor. So she's a pro, and uh, she's getting a whole bunch of footage, interviewing people along the way, getting some excellent uh, accident damage, uh, trials and tribulations of being on the road, and I'm anxious to see uh, what she can do with all this. I'm going to set my coffee down and answer questions. Who's got questions? Uh, boogity, boogity. Duct tape, uh, half a taco, bell cup. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, Lewis. Uh, it, it's actually uh, completed and running. Howdy. Hey, man. How's the, how's the cub doing? He's, uh, he's running a stealth bomber cub and uh, making it. And he actually beat me here today. How'd you do that? When did you went? What time did you leave? Oh, well, that's why. He left at 5 a.m. I didn't leave until 7.30. So, yeah, that would do it. Cool. Yeah. We stopped for an hour long lunch too. So, yeah. We probably have half hour, 40 minutes of the Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I'm trying to catch up to current. Uh, lots of broken collarbones. Yeah. Did we hear anything about somebody hit a deer today, broke a collarbone? Do we know who it was? Do we know who it was? No. We'll find out. Crazy. Blue Morpheus. Yeah. Actually, I was going to see it. Thanks, John. Feather. Oh, you hit a bird. Yeah. Boing. Cool. All right. I'm going to catch up to the latest comments and we'll see uh, where this goes. I have to do an oil change tonight. I'm overdue by my standards, but not by Honda's. Honda says 4,000 miles. I think that's a bit much for only one quart of oil. So uh, I'm at probably 3,500 right now. Uh, there's an auto zone just down the street that way, about uh, two miles. I'm going to stop there and uh, get an oil pan that I can use, unless I can find someone else around here that has an oil pan. And uh, I'm going to change the oil out on this guy. And everybody else probably needs to do the same. I know uh, uh, Tyler was saying that he needs to do his oil. We were looking at his tire. His tire is... Getting thin, but I think he can probably finish the event on this. Uh, he's got decent tread, and he's not down to the little wear bars. Trying to get the camera in here. He's still got a little gap to the wear bars, so I think he's got maybe another seven or 800 miles in this thing. But we'll have to check it, see how it goes over the next couple of days. Big Ruckus is still in it. Yep. Uh, silver cylinder on the front of that first bike I was just near. I'll go back, Kevin. I don't know where I was. Let me go to the bottom of the comments, and we'll go backwards as usual. Infamous. Oh, Infamous Dave. Let me go. 89. 
97 in Houston. I, let me tell you, it feels like 97 here. It's really, really humid. We've been sweating like crazy all day. What kind of tire is that? Uh, it's whatever comes on in factory. I don't think it's uh, aftermarket. It is a, 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 an IRC something. IRC trail winner GP212. That comes out on camera. IRC trail winner GP212R, something like that. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the factory tire that comes on these ADVs. Uh, now, uh, Doug put uh, City Grips on his, and the City Grip is wearing quite well, uh, just like mine is. It's got plenty of tread. These things are fantastic. Don't have a lot of traction in the dirt uh, and the sand and stuff like that, but we're doing okay. Uh, mine has got probably 4,000 miles on it or so, and it still looks new. You can't see the shadow is not quite right. I apologize. There we go. That's good good lighting um it's got a lot of tread depth left so i think i can finish the event easily on this tire and uh possibly even get home without changing but we'll see oh sorry that's not even my bike look at this i was on his bike this is ron's bike he's got a city grip my city grip yeah i thought my city grip looked better <laughs> i'm on the wrong bike cannonball brain uh if i can get the lighting to cooperate it's kind of dark under here anyway a uh, lot of tread depth i mean this thing is it's it's definitely going to make it his city grip's looking good too all right, where are we? That's factory and you cannot buy them. Yeah, Kevin's got it right. Uh, they're just unavailable. So people are switching over to the city grips. And uh, I think there were some alternate uh, tires that I'd seen on a few of the ADVs here. I'll go through and look at that in a moment. All right, I'm going to try to get current on comments. And then I'll go walk around, find new questions. City grips are great. Yes, you have got it. Who's there? Who's there? Dave. Yeah, plenty of tread. You got it, Dave. Infamous Dave. Uh, yes, he rides the cannonball. Uh, he's got a Vespa GTS, you know, two, uh, 300, and uh, he runs it. He usually places pretty well. I don't know if he's ever won his own events or not. I'm not sure. Digging the Cub. Nice. Tim. Hey, Tim. Clutch drive has been defective since new. I agree. I think that has been my problem all along because that bike has always had a shutter when I'm taking off. Uh, it always, you know, shuttered the, the whole dash and everything uh and after it warmed up sometimes it would go away usually it wouldn't so getting off the bottom end was always a problem you sexy beast he's he's making passes at me over here <laughs> he's riding tomorrow he told me he's riding tomorrow and we're holding him to it mr gimpy limpy don't wreck again okay can we can we put you in one of those big zorb balls somehow that way if you do uh, airbag vest that, there you go. He fell and he deployed in the parking lot. The best. And he really weebled, he weebled and wobbled and <laughs> did not fall down. <laughs> it was kind of it was kind of interesting. I have never seen one accident. Was it a demo or an accident? No, it was an accident. You know, when you're tired at the end of the day, you come in, you're, you're just ridden that 400, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Miles, you're hot, and he came in trying to maneuver into the parking lot. Did he drop his scoot? And he dropped. But he dropped a little bit. I would say probably about 10 miles an hour. Because you remember when you're and riding, it, yeah yeah riding, yeah sure riding, yeah you think you're stuck, yeah you think your legs work you're and you're yeah and you think your legs stopped. work and, and they might not yeah just, oh that's funny man like, I would have loved to have seen that <laughs> we're gonna get a zorb ball for Eric so he doesn't hurt himself tomorrow anyway uh, Troy Fairweather sorry on the late comments uh, what rollers I'm full stock right now Robbie uh, so it's the factory uh, rollers I think they're 17 gram or whatever they are. Uh, when I get home and do the full postmortem on the bike and tear it apart to clean it up and fix my broken plastics and all that, I might put the uh, Dr. Pulley 12 gram sliders back in there. I've already got a set of 20 by 15 12s. I might put those back in the factory variator and just leave it alone. Uh, but I need to give those parts back to Dino eventually or buy new ones and send the new ones to him. And I need to pay you for the, uh, the NCY. <laughs> Better Irish coffee. You got it, man. Uh, all depending on cell signal. What am I talking about, Doug? Okay, so what was or uh, what was the uh, silver cylinder? What are you asking, Kev? I don't remember. I was near something that had a silver cylinder. Silver cylinder. Silver cylinder. Was it the big rock silver silver cylinder? Is this what you were asking about? Is that a that's not a fuel tank, is it? Yeah. It is a fuel tank. Yeah. It's a fuel tank. If that's what you were asking about, it's a fuel tank up front. It's, is it plumbed in or just a uh, gravity plumbed in. plumbed in? So what is that? About three gallons, two, two and a half, two, 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 two. 
two gallon. It's nice. It Works drains good, man. That and then it drains the main tank. So. Yeah. So this uh, plums right in. The main yeah, this it. plums into the top of the main tank, so it fills everything, and then that allows his fuel gauge to still work. I'm sure. Uh, because the sender is down there. In the tank, that's when the fuel gauge goes down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's constantly topping off until uh, it's empty, and then the fuel tank uh, sender down there starts working. Otherwise, it's full until that point. Cool. Um, yeah, Doug, I think I answered that one. So I, I might put the Dr. Pulley sliders in there. I never had a problem with that originally, uh, and then I upgraded to the Dr. Pulley performance variator to get you know another five miles an hour out of the thing, and you know, moderate use, I think it's okay. Uh, but under the constant torture of heavy climbing and all that, not so much. And again, this, some of the, the Dr. Pulley problems might have been exacerbated by the uh, bad torque drive in the back, the Honda factory piece. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to go to the bottom because I, I missed a bunch of comments and I don't know how far back I want to go. I do apologize. Uh, and Gus, if you're still in here on the Rebel 11, uh, thanks for the beer money you've sent my way, man. It's uh, it's gone to good use. So, Eric, hey Eric, uh, you know I don't think I'm going to get the PCX 160. I think I'm going to go straight for the ADV 160 if I go that route. Uh, I'm really hoping that Honda gives us an announcement for the ADV 350 is coming to the U.S. We don't know if and when, but that's what I'm holding out for. Uh, if that doesn't happen, I'm going to get the ADV 160, and I'll probably probably cage it and kit it up for cannonball for 25. Uh, so I'll get the full, uh, you know, front guard cage that goes down and then it comes up on the back right there and gives you a rear uh, cage. And I can use that for mounting uh, cameras and luggage and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, and the, the part that goes up here in the front, I would put uh, foot pegs and other stuff on it and, you know, light kit and you, know, you name it. Get it up. Backrest on the big ruck. Yeah, it's like a lazy boy. Mike, I made it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, I, I mentioned it briefly when I started the stream, but I lost all my points for day three. I don't know what happened there. I'm going to see if I can talk to the officials and uh, have exceptions made because I killed myself getting there. Almost literally killed myself on the mountain in the dark uh, coming down. And I got to the hotel. I did all my photos. Everything was green. Uh except for, I think I missed the, the bonus points because I did the, the pavement bypass. But I had all the bonus points, everything was green, and somehow the card didn't get finalized and submitted. And now, as of today, I'm a DNF for day three, which is absolute crap. So anyway, we'll sort that out. Lars, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes uh, if Honda ever brings it. If they say that they're bringing it. It's on the Honda website, but we don't know what month it's going to be. We'll find out. I might trade the... Uh, the Riker in for the ADV. We'll see. Uh, what did I miss? Jacob, good luck tomorrow. Yeah, hey, man. Uh, let us know. You can you can find us out on the road if you look at the official track, uh, the official route map on scootercannonball.com. Uh, that's what I would say 90% of the people are following is the official track. And we'll be rolling through that. People get on the road as early as about 5 a.m. and start rolling, you know, to beat the heat of the day. So uh, yeah, who knows who you're going to see, when you're going to see them. I'm usually rolling by, let's say, 6.45 to 7. Uh, so that's my start point uh, from the hotel and then whatever road time is to get to all the various checkpoints. Uh, what do we got? Oh, cylinder back of the Vespa, uh, entrance of the hotel. Okay, I can look at that one too. Vespa, 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 entrance of the hotel. My coffee's sitting over here on the ground somewhere. I don't remember where I left it. Somebody probably spit in it already. Here's another cylinder. This is on a S Max 155. That's a fuel cell, plumbed in. You can see, uh, you know, fuel lines, T's, all kinds of stuff, and that has got a traditional uh, fuel pet cock here so i don't know if they leave that on or if they just feed it but they've got that pumped in through the uh rear fender area because the tank is kind of under here well yeah way under there the other one a vespa with a silver cylinder vespa silver cylinder vespa silver cylinder don't know man it's like a, a where's waldo i'm not sure i missed it 
I'm blind. I don't know. It's by the door. You'll have to tell me. Uh, what do we got? Anybody else? Questions? Questions? Uh, tra or Troy, uh, do guys do any engine mods that don't hurt reliability? Uh, it depends. I mean, if they get in and do serious engine work, if they've got the talent and the tools to do that, then yeah, they do okay. Uh, we've got a couple of guys in here from Houston that uh, run ADV 150s. Uh, Patrick and his uh, friend, I, I'm so bad with names, I forget. And, and I don't know their rider numbers, but I can look it up. Um, they custom built their ADV 150s last year or last time, you know, 21. And they put uh, slightly oversized uh, jugs and pistons in them. I think they were running 100 and 64 cc's or something like that uh and performance mods and all that and they survived the cannonball those machines ran great uh, no problems at all so it just depends on if you know what you're doing and you've got engine building experience because it's not as simple as just putting a big bore kit in something you know you've got to get the engine rebalanced and blueprinted for that new reciprocating weight and there's there's other stuff involved yeah uh do i have the animal cap uh yeah. Only shows my updated location at checkpoints. Yeah, it's turned on. Uh, I think several people were having that problem, but I will uh, make sure that it's turned on for tomorrow. Uh, and, of course, my GPS tracker uh, on my other live stream should be accurate uh, most of the day, as long as there's cellular coverage. It's pretty spotty out there on the road. Stepped away from tracking for a bit, missed the live. Well, it's still live. I don't know which live. I'm live. Outback. Hey, Outback. New to this. What is it? Please tell you. Okay. Uh, this is the Scooter Cannonball Run. Uh, we do this every two years. It is uh, a small bore motorcycle and scooter event, uh, mostly scooter. Uh, there are certain restrictions. You've usually got to meet three out of five mandatory criteria uh, to be classified as a scooter. Um, they've been making exceptions for other mini motos like the uh, the Super Cub and the Monkeys and stuff like that just this year. Uh, but for most purposes, this is a scooter event. Uh, it was originally a Vespa only event, and then they opened it up to other makes and brands back in 2012, I think it was. And what the event is, is we go coast to coast across the United States. And hey, uh, it's either east, west, west, east, north, south, whatever. Uh, but it's always about 3,000 miles or more, and it's done in. Uh, the shortest number of days possible to accommodate everyone's schedules. So this year it's eight days, 3,200 miles across the country. And uh, it's essentially a poker run across the country, meaning you have mandatory checkpoints or control points that you have to complete uh, in order to qualify for the day. Then there are also bonus points that are along that route. Some of them are directly on the path. Some of them you have to go around and around. You might have to take dirt to go get them. Uh, but you get points for every single thing that you do. And then at the end of the day, you're tallied on your score and that ranks you in the overall points. This is not a race. It is an event. It's an endurance event. So, uh, you don't get extra points for speeding and going crazy from checkpoint to checkpoint. Uh, you are based off of average speed limits in the area. So if you go too fast, you're actually docked points. If you go too slow, then you lose points, but, uh, it's mainly a consistency, uh, endurance event. And let me tell you, it takes endurance to complete this. <laughs> it's a uh, long hours on the scoots. You know, we're running anywhere from 300 and something to mid 400 miles uh, per day uh, on this event. Uh, and the event in 21 was much longer, 4,500 something miles. And we were doing 520, 550 mile days consecutively. So that was, that's rough. That's 12 hours a day on the scoot. That's, that's a lot of, a lot of time. Hope that answers it. You can go to scootercannonball.com and find all the details, including the route map, rider tracking, everything there. And uh, registration for the events usually opens up about a year before the next event. So uh, we're going to have our next one uh, in 2025 and uh, registration for it will open up sometime in 2024. So about this time next year, registration will open up and you can start uh, securing your spots, including uh, support truck spots and all that. Uh, there's one of the support trucks right there that hurts rental. It was carrying a lot of bikes yesterday. Uh, at Gat. Uh, let me see how many riders are not running at Gat. Uh, well over half, Kevin. Um, at Gat out here, again, it's not really feasible for the kind of riding we're doing. Uh, these are slow scoots. You're on the, you're going through 
towns and uh, stop and go stoplights, traffic, all that kind of stuff. I recommend Montgat, which is most of the gear all the time. Uh, but uh, some of the riders are fully garbed up. They've got riding pants, you know, armored uh, touring pants, that sort of thing. It's a good idea. Uh, I can't do it because of the heat. Uh, it's just, it's too much. Uh, we're out here in, you know, hundred degree plus temperatures and you might not be moving fast enough to get sufficient airflow. So then it becomes a heat exposure issue and then you got other problems. So, uh, you gotta, gotta understand your risks and know what, uh, an acceptable risk limit is for you. Uh, Billy maximum CC is 279 CCs. Uh, so everything under 279, as long as it qualifies as a scooter or has an exemption like the Super Cubs, can uh, participate. Uh, you get better handicap for the older the machine. Uh, you know, newer gets less points uh, because of, you know, more modern technology, more power, et cetera, et cetera. So the older the machine is, the better your handicap is. And also the smaller displacement, the better your handicap is. Uh, what else? What side did i start uh we started in san clemente california this year so we were all the way out on the west coast and this is always water to water so uh, we start at the pacific ocean we're going to the atlantic uh, or vice versa or up down uh, back in 21 we saw water on uh, pretty much three sides of the country you know we saw it on both coasts east and west and we also saw the great lakes so that was fun um Really good weather. Yeah, we had some rain, uh, really nasty storms getting into Guymon uh, day before yesterday. Or was that yesterday? That was yesterday. I don't know. My days are running together. See, cannonball brain. Um, the uh, <laughs> It's bad, man. <laughs> I'm getting laughed at by another rider. But you know, man, you know. You live it. What day is it? Exactly. Uh, where are we? What, did I take all my pictures? I don't remember. <laughs> Fatigue really starts setting in. Um, nasty weather getting into Guymon. Uh, we had uh, bad hail, really high winds, 60, 70 mile an hour winds. And I actually filmed a little tornado in a field uh, as we were passing by. So that's been about the extent of the bad weather. Uh, we've been pretty lucky so far. 21, we got sopping, sopping wet for the first three days because of the hurricane that walked up the East Coast. Outback, what's the fastest one of the scooters go? Well, it depends on you know, the displacement, uh, the bigger 300 class, uh, scoots can do 85, 90 miles an hour on the open highway. Uh, the smaller ones, uh, can usually maintain at least 50 miles per hour on the open road. That's kind of the minimum safe limit in my opinion, uh, because we get out on fast public highways that have speed limits of 75 miles an hour alive. Let's say hello to his friend. This is the, what the camera looks like on this side. You're on this side. Hi Howard. <laughs> awesome. Uh, if we uh, get into heavy headwinds and hills, speeds drop pretty rapidly. Uh, even on my PCX 150, uh, uphill sometimes in the mountains crossing the Continental Divide, we'll be lucky to get 38 or 40 miles an hour. So it, it can be uh, iffy. Anyway, trying to get on uh, 290 CC max. No, 280, uh, 279. 279 cc's that's it it was 278 for the uh vespa gts those are 278 cc's but then there were enough petitions to have the limit raised to 279 so the fours of 300 could uh participate and compete uh so that is the largest scoot that can compete as of right now 279 cc's that's it um Biggest thing I learned this far, uh, th so far this year, uh, stick with OEM parts as much as you can. Uh, the aftermarket stuff, uh, you always run a risk of reduced reliability. Uh, mine was a calculated risk because I had been running the Dr. Pulley performance variator in mine for several years. Uh, you know, I had 10,000 miles worth of experience with it, and it's always been a good performer. I, I hadn't had any catastrophic problems with it right up until I did. <laughs> and it was a pretty catastrophic failure. It, it totally ate away its uh, center bush or the uh, the brass bushing that's in the, the center bore of it. Uh, it's just gone. And the, the variator was doing this wobble, wobble, wobble and eating my belts. So I knew there was something wrong with it. Didn't know what it was until we identified that problem. And then the second problem was the factory uh, torque drive. Nice. 
air horns, uh, the uh, torque drive in the back, the whole rear clutch assembly and pulleys has been kind of a problem child with mine since day one, and that was an OEM part. But yeah, anyway, back to the original question. What's the biggest takeaway? Stick with OEM parts as much as possible. Uh, if you want to change your roller weights or sliders or something like that, that's okay. Otherwise, uh, you know, manufacturers spend millions and millions of dollars designing these things. They know what acceptable mechanical limits are and uh, tolerances and whatnot. So you go monkey in with that and you're on your own, man. Good luck. <laughs> and I, I actually I had a mental note to change this back to the factory variator before I left Houston. But I was busy. I forgot about it. Uh, and I was running OK with the latest change that I made in there. I thought, OK, it's fine. I did, you know, 800 miles down to SpaceX and back and it was fine. And it made it you know, out to New Mexico before it decided to start misbehaving. Of course, you know, it wouldn't misbehave when I'm close to home to fix it. Right. Right. Typical, typical Murphy. All right. You see Neil, did Neil make it in behind me and I wasn't looking. I don't see Neil. Neil's got to be here somewhere. I beat him in here. I think we'll find out. Let's walk over here and look at all the others that uh, arrived on this end of the parking lot. Shall we? And I'll try to catch up with comments. Um, John, tuning in from down under. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Eric, hey, you're watching the stream. He's already here. Howard Rains. Hey, Howard, from uh, Scooter Zine, right? Right? Am I remembering correctly? Outback. You guys have to camp, get a hotel. Uh, yes, both. Um, we are uh, moto campers. We've done, we've moto camped every single night of this trip so far, save one. Uh, what, two nights ago? We stayed in a hotel. I paid for a hotel room and everybody uh, uh, rode off of my tab and slept on the floor or whatever. So we had three of us in one hotel room. Um, but every other night, we've either been finding uh, state campgrounds, public camping spots, or I've been stealth camping on the side of the hotel, which is what's going to happen tonight. There's a little grass lot that Neil mentioned, uh, either around this side of the hotel or around this side of the hotel. And we're just going to be camping on the yard, man. We'll do it until somebody runs us off. Um, Howard, hey, looking forward to seeing the videos. Yeah, man, uh, it's going to take a while to compile and edit all that stuff, let me tell you. And there's Neil's scoot, so Neil is here. Um, yeah, I don't know what the uh, timeline is going to be for editing those. It's going to take a while. Uh, I'll try to get some shorts and highlight reels out uh, within, you know, a couple, three weeks of me getting back to Houston. But otherwise, it's going to be a big compilation effort. Uh, here's Neil's uh, Mad Max uh, S-Max. Uh, yeah, I agree, Brian. Uh, and I'll probably be one of the ones leading that charge. Uh, I would like to see the X max in there. It's 292 CCs. Uh, so if they can bump it up to 292 for the X max, I'll probably run an X max. We'll see. Although I think the X max might be a bit of a pig in the off-road sections. It's, uh, it's fairly tall and it's got, uh, a little bit of weight to deal with, but we'll see. Um, who else? I think that was it. Anybody else? I'm going to stay on for a little bit, and uh, then I've got to go find an oil pan. Somebody's got to have an oil pan around here, right? Maybe I could get a food tray or something and be a hoodlum. You want to do an oil change? Have you done an oil change yet? I have. Uh, Ron Rumpf, everybody. Ron, hey, Ron, Ron. how's everybody doing today? Uh, I have to do an oil change. It's okay. day three without. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm at like 3,200, 3,500 miles. It's time. Yeah, I'm at, uh, I'm we need to find an oil pan. If any, somebody's got an oil pan, I'll help you do the change if you don't know how to do it. Oh, I do know how oh, to do Oh, you know how. That. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I helped him change his belt last night. So Learned how? Yeah, yeah it's excellent. awesome. Uh, I've got all the tools to do the change. I just don't have a pan, so i got to find right. a pan. Uh, I'm going to see if I can secure it. Okay. Well, all right. Let me know. We're planning on moto camping. You can sleep with us on the dirt. I could use another shower, but, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna see. I, I can smell myself. It's never good when you can smell yourself, you know. I can smell myself 20 feet away. <laughs> uh, okay, I, had, I saw something, 50, uh, 50 states have I been to on the scooter. That's a good question, Outback. I don't know. That's, that's a real good question. On my scooter, how many have I seen? Well, if I include the, uh, if I include the, Super Cub that I rode in the 2019 Cannonball and rode that 10,000 miles around the country. I would say I've probably been to about 35, maybe closer to 40 of the lower 48 uh, on Minimoto. So Minimoto and scooter. 
Uh, this year is what 11 states or 14 states. I don't even know. Uh, but we went through a ton of states uh, on the 2019 cannibal or 2021 cannibal. Sorry. Uh, wait, what do we got? It just got finished and I'm trying to get one. What was that, Kevin? I don't know. Uh, oh, the windscreen. I gotcha. Uh, air cooled scoot still in it. That's a good question. And I don't have an answer for you. Uh, we had a couple of vintage, uh, two smokers in here, uh, two stroke Vespas. And I don't know if they're still in the game, but they would be, uh, they'd be the ones to watch. That's tough, man. I mean, <laughs> running a two stroke air cooled on the open highway for thousands of miles, you're bound to soft seize that engine multiple times. Uh, so I don't know. Um, Hey, Hey, he's here. What you Margarita. got? Huh? Margarita. What? 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 It's margarita time. It's margarita time. I'm going to set my coffee here. He's tempting me with margaritas. We need to find an oil pan. I'm going to do a change. Well, no, I can't fit that under my bike. Neil's, Neil's super duper uh, little uh, oil change kit that he's got right there doesn't fit under my scoot. Who wants a margarita? Hey, will they let you take it to go? Oh, hell yeah. I didn't think Arkansas was so cool, man. Hopefully my connectivity stays good as I'm walking. I don't know. I'm the uh, I'm down to four bar, three bars. I don't know. We'll see. Next question. Um, oh, anyone that scoots uh, kind of lay on your back when riding? Can't remember what they're called. Uh, improve aerodynamics. I don't. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, like a layback scooter. I don't think so. Uh, I don't know that we've got one. The big ruckus would be the closest one that I could think of like that. It's kind of, oh, thank you. Uh, it's a uh, no, no, no. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm blabbering on the phone here. Uh, it's kind of dark in here. I want a Rita to go. We're in Arkansas right now. Arkansas. Howdy, sir. I'm gonna find a spot. Hey, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get a to go with what I, I had cleaned up. Yep, sorry, everybody's uh, in You guys back. I apologize. As soon as I walked in there.
TV writer as well. Okay, uh, if you can, I'm doing a live at the same time here right now, but okay, I guess we, we can whenever. do a double. Yeah, I'll, I'll be finished with it in a minute. Yeah, I'll let you finish. Because <laughs> I'm inebriated. I have one of their large margaritas Oh, gotcha. Over there. Well, I, I can't get a margarita. Sorry for the dropout, everybody. Uh, the... Uh, the stream died uh, as soon as I went in there, and then it seems like everybody right over here in this area lost uh, Verizon signal all at the same time because yeah. multiple people were uh, cursing at their phones and rebooting, just like I was. Anyway, I can't get a margarita because I don't have a room key. They won't serve it to me without a room key. Oh, they were there. No, no. He said he can't do it. I've got to present him a room key to prove that I'm not going somewhere else, that I'm staying here. They never asked us for it. I know, I know. They changed the rules just for me. So, What's that? Oh, cool. All right. So anyway, I'm going to answer the last few questions that popped in. Dave Zimmerman says, hey, Cheryl. Hi, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the connectivity, everybody. I know I, we lost about half of the viewers all at once. Um, Honda limited the ramp profile. That's one possibility. Uh, that is one possibility. I'm not sure. Um, mainly the, uh, the ramp profile is a safety limit to keep the belt from riding out into the outer housing and rubbing on the backside of the belt, which would create a lot of heat, but that doesn't seem to happen. Uh, I survived 10,000 miles of it. Case of PBR. Hey, nice. I could use a case of PBR. Uh, we're back 7:13 PM. Yes. Yes. I apologize for that. Yes. I'm back. Uh, I had to do, uh, <laughs> I had to do a full reboot of the phone because everybody lost Verizon. It just went X. There was no signal. So I think a tower rebooted or something weird in the a background. Uh, AT&T didn't have any such issues. Yeah. Yeah. So AT&T is apparently good. Verizon is sucking out here in uh, middle of nowhere, Arkansas. Uh, where do we dump the oil? We have a recycle container and we take it over to uh, one of the auto parts stores. So we either recycle into our original uh, oil containers, you know, the, the one quart containers, or uh, we'll get one of those, uh, the big flat bins, you know, that uh, that holds a lot of oil and it's got a resealable cap on it. And we take it over and we just leave it at AutoZone and they take care of it. So we don't leave it in the parking lots. That's not nice. That's uncool. That's uncool. It has happened, but we don't do that. McDonald's food tray. <laughs> yeah, believe me, I've thought of it. Uh, actually, the little styrofoam trays are good as long as you don't drain hot oil into them. Uh, a nice cool drink would be good, but I am not... Uh, I'm not authorized. The, apparently, I don't look old enough and trustworthy enough to uh, get a margarita. I, I'm not old enough. I have to present a room key. Yeah. You can't tell I'm annoyed, can you? Um, the cell phone CVT. What is this, Lewis? I'm lost. Uh, yeah. Just had a dial-up flashback. That's hilarious. Too bad we don't have the, uh, the modem sound there. Shaboing, shaboing. Okay, anyway, I'm going to, yeah, have Neil get me one. Somebody else with a, a room key is going to get me a beer. Or, uh, a Rita. Howdy, sir. Howdy, howdy. Oh, parking lot racing. So, no helmet. somebody, uh, you want to go get me a Rita and I'll do an interview with you? Will they Will they sell you a Rita? They sold me a Rita, but I don't know if they'll let me get it like a dollar. Oh, okay, but so you do, had one in there. We do have a uh, scotch. Right. No, I'll skip that. I want to read it. I, uh, frozen cold would be most excellent. So I'll, I'll work on that later. Um, so uh, I don't know. I don't have an a, opinion on that, John. Uh, the PCX160 or ADV 160 better. Uh, I've not ridden either of them, uh, but I'm tentatively planning to get the ADV, the ADV uh, 160 when it comes. We got the monkey boys. Hey, hey, they're the monkeys. Ah, fly by. <laughs> We're having fun out here being hoodlums. As long as we don't tear up their parking lot, you know. So, anybody else? Uh, we're back up to 114. Uh, I, I gained a few after my loss. Johnny Powell, I saw him walk into the lobby earlier, like 20 minutes ago. On rims? Uh huh? Yeah, he does. Uh, it's on. It's on that Hertz rental truck over there. But you got to. You got no. You got to ask him. It's his. Him That's his fancy toy. Don't, don't go stealing phone. tools without asking. Stealth bomber cub. Hey, Gandalf. <laughs> I call him Gandalf. <laughs> Long white beard. It's funny. I like him. Uh, all right. It questions anyone? Uh, anybody? 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 No other questions. I am going to find somebody that can uh, buy beer for me because I'm not authorized. 
I'll just go over to this filling station and get some Dos Equis if I have to. Um, yeah, so anyone, anyone, anyone? Last minute questions, anything you want to see? Uh, I'll keep the stream open as long as it's uh, active. Uh, but if uh, I don't have anybody asking questions, then I presume everyone has gone to sleep and I'm talking to myself. So I'm going to put this up here, see if it stays. Oh, no, it's not going to stay there. Where can I put this? Where can I put this? Where can I put this? I'll put it on somebody else's seat. That would be a rude move, huh? Where's it going to go? Who's going? Oh, he's wrenching it good. Royal Alley. So I'm going to get a margarita. But yeah, I can't get one. They won't let me have it because I don't have a room key. i got to show them a room key to get it to go. I want, to stand, I want to stand out here and socialize and drink. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could find a place to put this. You know, uh, I have a little floor space. And uh, Can I steal one of your keys? Yeah. I just, uh, I'm just i going to borrow this. This is my collateral to get a friggin' drink. Oh, over there? Yeah. yeah so I, I have to show a room key to the bartender over there, or he won't give me uh, a drink to go. I don't know what kind of silly rule that is. They just changed the rule because... Neil isn't staying at that hotel, and uh, he got a drink. It's just discrimination, man. Shane, hey, Shane. Uh, so was it the variator, the clutch, causing all the issues? Yes, both. Uh, I don't know which one started the problem first, but they were both fighting out. Uh, uh, I think my torque drive has been bad since day one, which is the whole rear assembly, you know, the, the clutch uh, and rear pulley and spring and all that, because it's always shuttered belts and been kind of a pain in the butt. Um, that has just gotten worse. And the, I, I haven't done an explanation. I'm, I'm, I'm stuttering here because I'm trying to figure out the right way to say it. I have not taken that thing apart myself to see how everything is constructed internally. And listen to that. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Listen to that clutch. <laughs> anyway, um, we're fixing that or he's fixing that tomorrow. So, um, uh, we hope. Uh, mine has always been a problem on my a, uh, PCX150, and I think what happened is if there's an O-ring in that shaft somewhere that keeps all the grease in the center bearings on the bearings, uh, and it was puking it out uh, under centrifugal force all over the belt and the rest of the housing, and it was causing my belts to shred and self-destruct. So anyway, I'm going to leave you guys Sitting here for a moment, if you don't mind uh, my brief absence, I'm going to go get an alcoholic beverage uh, by way of a frozen margarita. Entire MC, good evening. Thank you. Yes, it worked very well today. I'm going to leave you guys sitting right here looking at the festivities and the grass. Uh, I'll be back in less than five minutes, I hope. Um, leave you in the driveway so you can see some drive-bys, hopefully. Uh, I'm going to go get my margarita, and if I take the phone in there with me, we lose the stream again. So bear with me. Intermission time. Yeah.
$17 margarita. Are you kidding me? 17 bucks. Man, that's not friendly. But I'm going to drink it. It's frozen and it's good. And it's good and strong. Woohoo. That'll light your day up. I'm going to sit down and chat. What shall we chat about? We're doing oil changes tonight. I need to get to that. We need to find an oil pan. Uh, it looks like Neil started his uh, change here. He's got his stuff out, but he hasn't gone anywhere with it yet. Uh, all right, so what do we talk about? I'm going to go to the bottom and work my way up. You know, that's how I do. Going backwards. Got to shave. Man, you're not you're not kidding. I'm doing the uh, the scooter gypsy look, the, the the homeless hobo on a on a motorcycle. I haven't had a shave since uh, day one of the cannonball, and it's getting pretty scruffy. 
uh, stomp the elites. Hey, you took a motorcycle class on a Kawasaki 150. Congrats. Uh, you done a, what, which Kawasaki 150? I'm trying to think of what 150 is in the U.S. market. Or are you not in the U.S.? What do we got? Uh, turn it into a mini adventure bike. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wanting to get the little uh, Honda XR150L and I'll turn it into a little mini ADV. 200 plus being you need to. <laughs> yeah, Troy, you got that right. Uh, I had a ransom card. Uh, I, I told somebody I just need to borrow your room card for a minute. And uh, yeah. Uh, is Neil the only trailer? No, there's another trailer. In fact, it was sitting here uh, in this same little corral earlier. Uh, it's a guy. Uh, he's I don't know his rider number, but he's an aerospace engineer, a really neat guy. And he has a trail tail that's holding a uh, five gallon aluminum fuel cell on it, a round spun cell. One of those, you know, looks like a bomb. Uh and that's all the trailer is doing. It's pulling a, a fuel cell and a couple of little things trapped to the trailer. So, cool. And that's the only two this year. Let it grow. Uh, you know, I used to have full beard for a long time, but it's too itchy in the summertime. I can't deal with it. Look scruffy. Seventeen dollars. Is that what you got? Oh. Is it the same size? Seventeen bucks. Well, that was a medium, and it was twelve. Well, this is bigger than I guess, but I would have gone for the 12 had I known that was going to be 17. It's good. Exactly. Shut up and drink. You know, you're never going to be here again. Are you? That's true. I didn't leave him much of a tip because he ran me through the ringer. No, you have to show a room key or I'm not going to give you a margarita. Yeah, they wouldn't give me a margarita to go unless I showed him a room key. Isn't that messed up? I know. It's like, when did you change the rules? Because I know somebody that's out there that definitely doesn't have a room. Uh, let's go there. What kind of oil? Oh, God. Yeah, let's not get into the uh, the oil uh, drama. It's a religion, man. 2020 P6, 150 and a 22. Okay, so Roger is saying that this, the PCX 160 is worth the upgrade. What, what's your take on the fuel economy difference, Roger? Because I know that four-valve engine is a lot more uh, thirsty. Yes, you are correct, Kevin. The margarita, this margarita cost more than all of the fuel that I burned today in the PCX 150. Right, right Definitely more. So, that's Johnny Powell Scoot. Uh, which one are we talking about? Johnny Powell Scoot. Uh, this one here, yeah, 272. Yeah, that's Johnny Powell. Uh, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, it's Johnny Powell. Um, yeah, it was. But, you know, Cannonball tends to uh, unpretty things real pretty quick. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Cannonball makes pretty things not so pretty pretty quick. Uh, okay, where are we? I'm the only person in Florida running a 22 PCX with custom exhaust and intake, and you get 86. Nice. That's, that's good and fast. But... Uh, is the reliability there? That's the real question for events like this. And I'm not knocking your your PCX. Don't don't take that the wrong way. Uh, and I can't throw stones because I had a performance NC or not NCY uh, Doctor Pulley Variator in this one that shit the bed in a big fashion. So <laughs> I, I know from experience that uh, aftermarket stuff can leave you stranded. It's just a matter of when it's going to do it. Uh, actually, roughly the same. That's good to know roger what are you getting though i mean are you running them full tilt boogie all the time uh the one thing that i've been really impressed with my 2015 pcx is the fuel economy it's the two valve motor and i consistently get about 102 to 110 miles to the gallon at freeway speeds at 60 miles an hour uh full tilt boogie wide open uh with the doctor pulley variator in it i was getting 72 to 74 miles an hour and the fuel economy for a full tank of fuel wide open for the entire tank. Uh, the lowest I ever got was 86. So that's pretty good. Uh, stock is best. Yeah, absolutely. Because you've got to have the reliability. you got to know that it's not going to hand grenade on you. If you're somewhere close to home and it hand grenades, yeah, that's okay. You, know, you can trailer at home. You can get a truck, whatever. But 
when you're across the country and that is your ride home, <laughs> you want that thing to be as reliable as possible. It is my ride home. Two mile per gallon better than your ADV 150 did. Yes. Well, now that's that's a different animal as well because the ADV 150s tend to be much thirstier than the PCXs. I haven't figured out why. I think it just comes down to aerodynamics, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, Roger changed oil type and gas mileage went up. What kind of oil? My uh, PCX 150 has been on a steady diet of the Honda HP4M uh, with the Molly additive. So it's the MB designation and it doesn't use or leak a drop of oil. I mean, even at wide open throttle for thousands of miles at a time, I'll check that dipstick and it's right where I left it every single time. Even right now, I got 3,500 miles on my oil that's getting ready to be changed out tonight. It's still at the top of the hash marks after all that abuse. It's beautiful. Uh, I thought of switching it over, but you know, what I've got in there works. Uh, 86 mile per gallon upgrades and running hard. Good. That's awesome. That's excellent. 65 with room to spare, 90 miles to the gallon. Yeah. Nice. Congrats. Yeah. I'm, so I'm looking hard at that ADV 160 when it comes out. I might get one. It'll be fun. Speed only 73. Yeah. Okay. Dark night. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, we are, uh, we're still on the cannonball. So that's my, uh, start and finish to the weekend. We're two days out. Uh, we're going to be finishing, in uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina, two days from now. Uh, tomorrow is day seven, and the final is day eight. Troy, Molly may help rings seal better. Yeah, I think that's the deal. And it, it adds the slippery factor in there. So, uh, sorry, I'm setting you guys on the pavement so I can continue nursing my $17 margarita. It needs to disappear while it's still icy. And I'm going to be sloppy. Um get mileage yeah extra three to four yep and i think that's the deal is uh that molly uh in these scooter engines they don't have wet clutch they don't have gears anything like that no transmission so it's just your bottom end bearings and you know rod and piston rings and uh, you know upper cylinder lubrication you know for your valves and rockers and all that so the oil supply isn't contaminated as quickly and that molly stuff works great apparently from what i understand in normal motorcycle engines with wet clutches and all that molly is really bad obviously because you know it doesn't work well with wet clutches but there's also something going on i don't know if it's coming from the european union or whatever but they're trying to get rid of the oils that have molly additives something about emission standards i don't know what it is it's not meeting euro four euro five i'm not sure but the mb oils are getting hard to come by i'll tell you uh, a lot of the dealers aren't getting them. They're not stocking them anymore. So when I find them, I buy like 12 quarts of it. Um, well, Cherry might need help with an oil change. Sure. Oh, her husband's got medical issues. Uh, oh, so he didn't make it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be glad to help. I'll, I'll find her. I don't know much about the Vespas, but uh, I'll help. We'll figure it out. Tell her where, you know where I'm sitting uh, based on the, the photos here. I'm at the corner of the parking lot right over here in front of the, uh, the comfort Inn. So we're, we're here right in front of the restaurant. So send her over my way and we'll, we'll help her get it changed. We'll find some people that are experts in the uh, Vespas. Glenn. Hey, thanks Glenn. Appreciate it. Uh, no trouble today, man. The thing ran like a top. Quasi, why do you use oil with Molly? Dealer said Molly is for break-in. No, no, not correct. Uh, your dealer is smoking crack and they need to put the pipe down. Stop giving out incorrect advice. I get so tired of dealers that have their heads up their ass and they just regurgitate the same old shit that everyone else keeps saying to them and they don't actually do the research for themselves. Pardon the rant, but <laughs> it's really annoying when dealers should have all the facts and they're actually giving their clients bad information. That's just inexcusable in my book and they should find a new fucking job. Pardon my language. Um, the MB is actually specified in the owner's manual for the PCX. And the reason I went off on that little rant is the same dealer that I bought this HP4M from before I left Houston was telling me the same thing. Oh, you can't put MB in there. Really? Here's the PDF of the owner's manual and they specify very, very clearly MB HP4M. The manufacturer made it. They know the engine. They spec it. You should listen. <laughs> so tell the dealers they're full of shit. 
uh, Sam, what did I use for break-in? What oil? Uh, I just, I left the factory stuff in there. Uh, whatever the break-in oil is that they have, uh, I'm betting it's not the Molly for the break-in. They probably have something with the uh, high zinc additives, you know, to help uh, set the valve seats and, you know, help uh, break in the cylinder honing and all that. But uh, I always change the oil early on all my machines. I don't like leaving the break-in oil in there for any longer than necessary. Usually three to 500 miles is where I call it. Uh, and then I'll drain it out and I'll put in whatever the manual specifies in a non-synthetic variety uh, until it gets up to about a thousand miles, maybe 1500 miles. And then I change it again uh, I do whatever, you know, first service intervals need to be done, like valve checks or whatever. And then, uh, after it's at about somewhere between a thousand and 1500, I'll switch over to either semi-synthetic or full synthetic. And that's what this scooter has been eating since it was new and it's uh, doing fine. Doing great. Um, <laughs> $17 cocktail. Uh, yeah. Greed is everywhere, isn't it? Man, greed and giving people a hard time because they don't look trustworthy to get a, a drink. Come on, man. Increased mileage. Yep. Cool. I'm going to try to catch up on made an on location. Oh, cool. Oh, it was given the SNL giveaway. Thanks for that, Kev. I don't know uh, why it's doing that because I uploaded a custom photo uh, and I think it went bonkers when I lost the stream and came back. I don't know for sure, but yeah, thanks for that. Um, oh, my comments are going nutty. Uh, da, 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 da. Ginger isn't there yet. Okay. Well, let me know when she gets here. I'll thank. No. I'll be happy to help. What's my take on the Vitachi? I don't know. I haven't had any of those. Um, people have been asking me about those and a couple of the other, uh, like the Sim and some of the others. I haven't owned them personally. I know that anything that's not the big Japanese three, uh, for scooters anyway, uh, and that's Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki. If they're outside of those big three, you're kind of taking your chance on uh, parts availability and service networks out there, you know, dealer support and that sort of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. If you don't mind working on your own scoots and wrenching and doing your own repairs and maintenance, then you can get whatever you want. Hey, hey. Uh, you can get whatever you want and uh, take care of it yourself. Most of the Chinese scooters are junk. I don't recommend them to anybody. Uh, the Korean varieties and some of the Taiwanese are actually very good and they sell just as much or more, uh, units across the world than, you know, the big Japanese three. So, yeah. Is Honda. Yes. Yeah. We've actually got a Honda trail 125 competing and he's still in the game. Uh, he's, he's turning some long days cause those things are limited to, you know, 52 to 55 ish on the highway. Uh, that's just all they're going to do. But, you know, you get out early enough and you could do it. You can make it happen. I was thinking of taking mine. I just decided against it. Uh, yep, you got it right, Brian. The Honda manual specifies Molly. Tell the dealers to pull their heads out of their ass. Uh, the official website has my handicap is 105. How is that calculated? Um, and it would take too long to go into here, but you can read all the rules and how they, how they work that. Uh, basically the higher your handicap is, the more your points multiply against that percentage. So uh, as scoots are older, uh, older scoots get a better handicap and lower displacement uh, get better handicap. So the newer you are or the higher the displacement your engine, the lower your handicap goes and it'll be below 100. Uh, and it's all based off of like a 1986 Vespa P200 or something like that. Uh, the displacement, the power output, maximum speed, all those metrics are the baseline. And then your uh, scooter is either better or faster or worse than that P200. And that's how the, the handicapping works. Uh, yeah, you argued with your dealer about it too. Uh, trying to catch up. Mary, oh, oh Marty. Uh, how did I attach milk crate to the Honda Trail 125? Um, the lazy man's way. I use zip ties. Uh, the big heavy duty 75 pound ones. Uh, so I could quite literally pick up the bike with the, the crate when it's attached. I put a zip tie in all four corners of it down through the metal rack. The better way to do it would be to use some M, what are they, M6 by 1.0 thread uh, bolts and like a piece of metal or aluminum back strap or something like that. 
the back strap would go flat down on the bottom of the crate to pinch it. And then the bolts you can run through right into the holes that are in the, uh, the OEM rack. And I think those holes are there to mount a seat. I'm not really sure what they're for. I've never seen what factory accessory is supposed to plug into that. But there are, I know, two, maybe four holes that are threaded right there in the uh, uh, rack. And you can just use those. They, they're painted over, unfortunately. So you got to run a tap through them to clean the, the threads out. Uh, yes, skip synthetic on the first change. You got it. You never want synthetic uh, in the engine until it's fully bedded in because it can cause you problems further down the line. Basically, the engine is not bedded in fully. Uh, you're not getting all the hashing out of your cylinder. Uh, valve seats aren't wearing in quite properly to fully seal. It can cause you issues. So basically, synthetic oils can be too slippery during break-in. Uh, Molly build up in oils. Yep, under valve covers, not change the proper mileage. Yeah, the, Troy, that's a fair point. You got it. Um, but again, these uh, these little engines only hold a quart of oil. It's under pretty high stress all the time, high circulation. They do not have oil filters, and uh, that's kind of a, a sticky point of mine. I don't know how or why Honda could think that 4,000 miles is a good change interval on such a small quantity of oil that's not being actively filtered. I don't get that. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I, I never let mine go that long. I usually do... 2,000 to 2,500 miles, and I'm already at like 3,500, so mine's getting changed tonight. And Dark Knight, thanks for the 10 spot. I'm way late on that shout-out. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That goes uh, over halfway to buying my uh, overpriced margarita tonight. Gasworks, hey, how are you doing, buddy? I haven't talked to you in a long time. Uh, ADV really woke up after break-in. Yep, yeah. Uh, these uh, scoots take a little while to loosen up. Uh, I noticed when I rode Kevin's uh, ADV 150, it felt really tight. It wasn't very fast, not very peppy on acceleration or anything, but that's to be expected with CVTs because they've also got a bed in. You, your uh, clutch shoes in the back have got to uh, bed in and bite to the clutch bell. Uh, the belt is still fresh and not quite grippy enough yet, uh, and the engine is still tight. So once you get you know, a 1,000 or 2 miles on them, they usually loosen up and get a little bit better on fuel economy and power. Uh, and that's assuming you're taking care of them. How much speed did I lose? Glenn, that's a great question. Uh, I lost uh, 10 miles an hour. So the, the Dr. Pulley variator and sliders are a serious performance upgrade. Uh, but under this kind of abuse, they didn't hold up all that well. Uh, now, granted, they had 10,000 miles on them by the time I made it out here. So I can't complain too much. But I've been having problems with the factory uh, torque drive in the back for a long time. So I think it might have been my problem all along. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm limited to 62, 63, maybe 64, and it bounces off the rev limiter. Uh, and before I was able to get 72 to 74 drag limited, never touching the rev limiter. Uh, can't trust dealers. Yeah, sorry, I'm way late on these comments. Yep, do your own research. Trust what the manufacturer says, not what the dealers are saying. And I know that's controversial. I don't like to dealer bash, but the dealers are in the game to make money. They're not your friend. Uh, they're only your friend if you're a repeat customer and they know that you know how to sniff out bullshit. Uh, if they think they can pull the wool over your eyes to sell more stuff or sell different stuff, they're going to do it every time because they're in there to make profit. So in my opinion, that's conflict of interest. But, you know, not all dealers are that way. A lot of them are. You just have to do your own research and make sure that you understand the pros and cons of straying from the manufacturer's recommendations. Manufacturer knows all. They made it. They did all the research, spent millions of dollars of R&D to do it. So uh, they're the guys with the real real info. Uh, yeah, they want you to finance through them. You got it. Kimco is made by Taito and Company in Taiwan. Yep, yep. Uh, parts availability is key. Yep, we're way behind. I know. I'm sorry. I don't know when these comments came in. They just all flood in at some some point. Korea. Yeah. Uh, Kimco moved. Yeah. They still have uh, a lot of their production in Korea, from what I understand. Uh, Sim, I believe, started out also as a Korean company, didn't they? Correct me if I'm wrong. Four problems. Had to check your owner's manual. HP4M still valid in 2022. Yep. I know. And the dealers say, no, you shouldn't run well. It's bad for your clutch. I actually had one say that to me. It's bad for your clutch. Okay. 
genius, don't you realize that the clutch on a scooter is not in the oil bath? It's not a wet clutch. It's a dry clutch in the back end. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, but it's still bad. <laughs> Shut up. Just go away. Go find a new job. You suck. Uh, pulling a 30-gallon tanker. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Came to life after a bad hinder moss. Yeah, break-in is key. Uh, 2022, the next last week. Congrats, man. Um, tell Ron uh, that the rainbow coloring on his clutch bell is from the factory. You, his PCX bell looks like that when brand new. What? Mine doesn't look anything like that. Was that something just for the 2013s? That's interesting. Because to me... That is a very hot clutch bill. Uh, it's not uncommon to see bluing on them like that when the, the clutch shoes are slipping and they're generating too much heat. But normally, uh, you shouldn't see a bluing like that. Uh, they don't do that type of heat treating on those things at the factory. That's weird, man. I wonder if that's something about 2013. Good info. I'll, I'll let him know. But we know that he's dragging shoes because you can hear it. Uh, even you know, just rolling it in the parking lot, you can hear it dragging. It's, it's terrible. So he's got other issues there. Uh, it could be final drive gears, but I doubt it. It's it's more uh, clutch bill against the shoes. Uh, Quasi looks like a drunk. Yeah, exactly. They won't let me buy nothing. Okay, trying to catch up. Sorry, comment watching something earlier. Feed, do you have a magnetic? Yes, jeans. Yeah, yeah, I put um, the gold plug in all of my bikes, uh, most of them, it's a pretty universal size. It's the MP-01. Uh, it's a 17 millimeter head. And I don't recall what the the thread pitch and size is. I believe it's an M8 by 1.5 millimeter thread. Um, I don't have all the specs in front of me, but the MP-01 fits most Japanese uh, motorcycles. And uh, I put those in my bikes at the first early oil change on all of them. And by that second oil change, which is usually around a thousand miles, there's always ferrous metal on that magnet. So it's doing a good job. And the scooter engines, again, they don't have oil filters. So you want to get that crap out of the oil if you can. They have a screen, but it's not the same thing. That screen is huge. It's only for, you know, stuff the size of toothpicks. Um, well, more than 4,000 minutes of running oil after 4,000 miles. Of yeah, yeah. That, and that's my point. <laughs> You're talking about one quart of oil, one liter of oil. Pardon me while I stretch my legs out in front of the camera. Um, one quart of oil getting the, you know what, squeezed and pinched and crushed out of it in these high compression, high stress little engines for unreal number of hours. And uh, I can't imagine that that's not broken down and just, you know, totally ineffective at 4,000 miles. So oils are cheap. Engines are not. Change it early and often. Uh, trust them. You got it. You got it, Kevin. Those guys know what they're doing. No, no. Well, no, it would let me qualify that. Uh, if they say 4,000 miles, it's 4,000 miles, but okay. I'll, I'll argue the point with you here. What is the harm in changing the oil early? If anybody can ever give me a valid explanation on what's the harm in changing oil early, then I might change my stance, but th there is no valid argument. I mean, I can guarantee you there's not a valid argument for saying it's not beneficial to change it early because i can tell you when i change this oil and it's black that means it's getting spent it's got a lot of suspended particulates in it and some of those particulates may be abrasive and if you go and you look at all the studies on this stuff uh they talk about submicron sized particles are the ones that cause 99 percent of all of your upper cylinder wear they're the ones that chew up your rings they're the ones that chew up your valve seats it's all the really really tiny 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 particles so you're going to be able to capture some of that stuff out of the oil with a magnetic drain bolt like the, the gold plug. It's going to pull the ferrous particles out of there. What it's not going to pull out of there are burned hydrocarbons, crystallized uh, deposits that form in the oil at high temperatures. And it's also not going to pull out anything that's aluminum or non-ferrous. So being the fact that these engines do not have oil filters in them, you're circulating all that abrasive particulate in there for longer than it really should be in there. <laughs> and, you know, I've been wrenching and racing all my life and I've rebuilt, I can't count how many engines and uh, almost all of them that fail are due to either uh, metallurgical stress, you know, a, a failure of a, a part like a piston or, you know, crank or whatever, uh, or it's oil related failure. And if you change the oil early, you know, uh, 
$8, $9, $10 quart of oil a little bit early is a whole lot cheaper than doing damage to an engine that's going to cost you a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars to rebuild. Anyway, I'm not I'm not bagging on you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oil is cheap. Engines aren't. Uh, Shane, the uh, the variator is now running factory uh, everything. So it's it's 100 percent factory inside the CVT case. Um, the, uh, I want to say the factory weights are 17 gram, if I remember the specs right. Uh, when I get back home to Houston, I might put the Dr. Pulley sliders back in it, and I have 12 gram sliders for that. Uh, sliders, ooh, nice break. Uh, nice. Uh, the uh, sliders are lighter because they have a different profile, and they act a little differently inside the variator, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I'm going to try to get to the bottom of the comments. I'll come back to what I missed. I'm way behind. Kevin, okay. Oil changes in viscosity over miles. Engine operates specifically at specific viscosity range. Yes, I agree. And I have done the research, and I've even done some uh, cook testing of my own. Uh, what I will tell you from empirical evidence and testing that I've done is if you test the oils out of the container, they meet within... 90% of the manufacturer's specified viscosity rating. And you can test that by sending it off to labs uh, and doing the uh, oil deposit tests, you know, the the uh, you know, the full analysis that they do for suspended metals and that sort of thing. Mm. When they come out of the bottle, they're going to meet exactly what's required for the engine by spec. Car engines operate in different uh, stress levels, uh, different uh, clearance levels. There's a lot of differences between a car engine and a motorcycle engine. So the tests that are aimed at cars uh, for longevity testing and things like that do not necessarily translate over to motorcycle engines because you're talking about a lot of different stresses involved, not to mention that, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking scooter engines out of the equation here. Motorcycle engines are sharing a geared transmission with, uh, you know, friction modifiers for wet clutch, a lot of different stuff. So they're not quite apples to apples. You can't, uh, you can't draw even parallels there and expect your results to be the same. That's flawed science. Where am I going? 2K. Yep. 2K. I try to go 2K to 3K somewhere like that. I'd rather burn a little, you know, extra money in oil than, uh, worry about sacrificing longevity of the engine if I can. David, hey man, thanks. Appreciate the good luck. I'm going to go backwards on comments that I missed. Um, Joker, hey, uh, the day completed today perfectly. The scoot got flogged to the gills. I mean, I just absolutely beat that little thing to death. Uh, full throttle all day long, 360 something miles. It returned a pretty respectable 98 mile per gallon uh, average uh, indicated anyway. I don't know what the real numbers are. I haven't done the mileage calculation, but uh, it did good. It has all of its climbing power back. The CBT is behaving itself, so Dino is the man. Thank you, Dino. Uh, Robbie is the man. Robbie can uh, for bailing me out uh, on the previous day, getting me a new Dr. Pulley variator to try to get things going again, but then I realized that it was the factory the torque drive, the whole rear assembly that was my root cause <laughs> you need to learn how to change the oil. It's easy. Warm it up, get it to full operating temperature, uh, and then uh, shut it down, let it sit just long enough that it'll cool where you're not going to burn your hands when you get in there. And then the rest of the process is easy. Uh, just follow what it says in the uh, service manual or help have somebody help you that's done it. It's real easy. Real talk. Hey, thanks for the thumbs up. Uh, seven... Uh, so is it better to stay with the Honda OEM parts compared to the Dr. Pulley? Yes. For reliability and longevity, yes. Always stick with the manufacturer because they designed it. They know what they're doing. Uh, aftermarket companies, they'll find ways to get more performance out of it uh, or more efficiency or this or that. But there's almost always going to be a trade-off in some capacity. And that resultant factor is usually the longevity. You're going to have less material in there, you know, through lighter parts, different alloys, whatever it is, uh, that are going to sacrifice reliability in the long run. And the Dr. Pulley variator that died in my scoot uh, a couple days ago, it was a pretty spectacular failure. I've never seen one do that where it ate the center bearing out completely. Uh, the brass bushing bearing in there, that's a sacrificial metal, uh, you know, so it self lubricates essentially and slowly wears itself away as it does that. But 
for it to just totally hand grenade in the span of a thousand miles is a pretty spectacular failure in my book. Um, going backwards, I'll go back to the stuff. 279 is the top, but you can ride a sport. Yes. Yeah, you can you can take anything you want. We've got guys on big uh, BMWs and uh, KTMs and stuff like that. And we've even got a guy riding his own uh, Tenere 700 now because his Z125 died. So if you want to ride along, you can ride along, uh, but you're not officially recognized and you can't compete as a uh, cannonballer if you don't have something that meets scooter requirements and isn't under 279 cc's. Um, okay, so I'm trying to go down to the bottom. I'll find it. Uh, Lewis, everything is compromised. Yep, you got it. Yep, you can have more power uh, and uh, <laughs> you're going to chew more fuel. You can have more speed, less acceleration. You can have more acceleration, less speed. There's always a trade-off. So you just have to find what fits your use case and understand how you're skewing the scales. Uh, Troy, Molly Additive. Yeah, I thought about using the little add-in paste packs from, uh, you know, there's Molly Coat, there's uh, Motol, there's a handful of them out there that do it, but I'd much rather stick with a, a truly authorized MB rated oil. So that's why I've just been running the HP4M all this time. Uh, who taught me how to fix a scooter? Uh, me. <laughs> I'm not a professional mechanic, but I've been racing and wrenching all my life. Rebuilt uh, no, hundreds and hundreds of engines, uh, everything from cars to trucks to motorcycles, two strokes, four strokes, you name it. So just uh, you learn a few things along the way. And as long as you have the ability to follow directions in a shop manual and you're somewhat technically inclined, it's really not voodoo or black magic. Uh, it's, it's just understanding how things go together and how to apply engineering and mechanical principles to what's in front of you. Uh, and you can't be afraid to get your hands dirty. So long story short, if you grab a shop manual and you have the right tools on hand, you can do pretty much anything that the uh, authorized factory service centers or authorized shops can do for yourself. Uh, you might have a little bit of trial and error and there are some artistic points to it as far as, you know, being uh, practical science where you've got to have experience in doing it to learn uh, little shortcomings and, you know, things that the, the shop manual may not tell you. Uh, it's inferred knowledge and they just assume that someone is doing it that has experience. So uh, you learn as you go, but uh, yeah, get in there, get dirty. Nice light on the 212. Yeah, yeah. He's. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. It's a. It's an LED. It's real bright. I don't know if it's uh, on a switch or if it's always on. I'm not sure. But he said it, it fixes the low fill problem. He showed me the light pattern the other night. And uh, it's kind of dark close to the bike. And it adds all the local fill. It's pretty slick. Rooting for me and Johnny Powell. Hey, thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. Uh, so, seeing a Jeep with a 4.0 that never had the oil changed. 280. Just topped it off with the 4.0 from the Ford 300. It's one of the best... Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it, of course, nobody recommends you abuse your engine like that, but some of them can, some of them can handle it. It just depends on the engineering that the manufacturer, the OEM had in place when they were designing it, what kind of tolerances are, uh, are in play and uh, how robust the oiling system is, uh, because they almost always boil down to oil related failures one way or another. It's either a metallurgical failure or uh, an oil related failure. So. Uh, going to the new comments. Sorry. Uh, Molly additive hard to get. Yeah, that was back to that one. Yeah. You have to shake it. Uh, I'm sure even the Honda oil, uh, the Molly stuff settles out, but uh, I always shake them and you know, we use usually 800 to 850 mil out of the container and then we have a little bit left and I dump that all into another container and you know, keep, keep on going down the train. Auto zone closes at nine. Yeah, it's eight o'clock. Did uh, did anyone find an oil pan? I know you've got yours, Neil. An oil pan, because we got a couple of PCXs that need a change, and uh, I've got oil on my boot. How tall are they, though? My scoot's short. I'll have to cut it down. No, my scoot's too too low for that. On the grass. What happened? Thought. We're, we're debating over here 
I'll, I'll aim you at the boys. We're debating. Um, I've got to elevate my scoot because I have to have a pretty low pan in order to drain the oil. Uh, we'll see. Um, David, hey, David, thanks. Yeah, no, thanks to you for watching. We've got 130 of us in here listening to me blather on. Uh, rode 45 miles for an ice cream cone. Hell yeah. Any excuse to ride. Any excuse to ride. Um, Asian reviews. Seat is not for long. Well, yeah, that's kind of common. Uh, the OEM seats usually leave a lot to be desired, and you can fix some of that with like an air hawk pad or something like that, but a lot of people get custom seats and saddles on their bikes anyway to suit whatever their use case is. For me, I'm usually doing these long distance trips and I've built up butt endurance for pretty bad seats, but uh, air hawk to the rescue most of the time. 1999. Who sent me in 1999? I got to go to the bottom. What the? Four props. Hey, man. I appreciate that 20 spot. Thank you. That that more than covered the, uh, the margarita. If I finish all this one, I might go for another one, but I got a ride tomorrow. I don't want to hang over. Um, yeah, use the curb. <laughs> That's exactly what Neil was saying. I might bump the front wheel up on there and uh, we'll, we'll see. But the problem is then somebody's got to hold it because I can't have the center stand down while I'm trying to drain it, especially if the front end is elevated because it's, it's, a, it's going to piss all down the uh, center stand legs. So yeah, it's, it's tough. The, the proper way to change the PCX-150 is on the side stand, and then after most of it drains out, you lean it up off the side stand to get it vertical and get the rest out of the crankcase. Otherwise, everything drains right down the, the center stand leg. It sucks. Uh, 138 on the 19 two-stroke has a sheepskin. Yeah, yeah, sheepskin cover. I've even seen people use the, uh, the taxi cab beads, those uh, beaded seat cover things. I don't know if I could deal with that. You know, hard wooden beads on my butt? That's that's a little weird. It sounds like a weird sex toy. Uh, $17 oil cup. Yeah, yeah. I, I could finish that out, but I'd have to cut it down a little bit. Too, that's still too tall. See, Neil's oil change thing, for reference, it's, it's shorter than that, and it doesn't fit under the bike. What have we got? Uh, walking around the hotel ice tray. Yeah, yeah. I know. I saw that. That's what Neil was saying. Uh, stock seats suck. I'm going to go through the questions fast. First time rebuilding an engine, whatever the hour rate time estimate is multiplied by 100. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you're learning as you go. It's uh, on the job training and you're not being paid for it. So your time is the factor that you've got to consider one way or another. You know, what is your time worth? If you're doing it as a learning exercise, then you have to understand that it's going to take a lot of time. If you're trying to get a value add proposition out of it by rebuilding your own engine or doing your own maintenance or whatever it might be, you have to factor in what is your time worth because you're going to spend a lot more time doing it, learning it, than a shop pro that's done it 20 or 30 times is going to do. So, you know, if you have to pay $150 or $175 in shop labor, which is what it's going up to these days, it, can you do it? yourself in the time it would do you know require to make that happen i don't know you know for oil changes and simple maintenance yeah it, pretty much anybody can why would you pay the dealer to do that if you can do it at home you just get your hands dirty no problem but if it comes to major mechanical that requires precision machine tools you know micrometers run out dial gauges all the stuff that's required for you know transmission work or precision engine work it might be better to go ahead and farm that out to a machine shop uh, or potentially even the dealer. But dealers have gotten so outrageous these days. I would go more for a performance engine shop or a machine shop to do those things. And you can do the rough assembly, have them do the precision work, you know. Uh, Got to go down. Hey, Roy, thanks for tuning in, Roy. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, so going back to the end. Oil change fund. <laughs> uh, Lewis, should have kept that one gallon gas can, cut it down. We do have it. Uh, we don't know who it belongs to. We're going to ask around, see if we can find who lost it. Uh, but, yeah, it might become an oil drain pan. We'll find out. We were. It was funny when we were on the road. We decided to use that oil because we were or oil uh, the gasoline because we were running low and we just topped everybody off. We didn't want to stop at a gas station. And uh, we were trying to decide – if the fuel was worth more or the container was worth more, I think the fuel was worth 
less, but we don't know. Those containers, one gallon containers are probably, you know, eight bucks, 10 bucks, five bucks a gallon where we were. So who knows? Great idea. What did I miss? Oh, I think that was on the cutting down the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. Um, they, they could hold it for me. Yeah, probably. You have a corner curb there, front wheel. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. It just has to hold still. The, the real problem is, uh, it needs to be somewhat level, uh, on all three axes before you can drain all the oil out because the location of the drain hole in the sump is in a weird spot. I just don't like the fact that Honda put it so close to the center stand. Uh, straddle curb corner. Yep. Yep. That was the other one. Extra. I need an extra three to four inches, Robbie. Is that what we're talking about? Three to four inches anywhere would work. Just saying. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate the feedback. I made it. And I'll go back over there. My scoot. I'm going to move my scoot over here and do my oil change over here, I guess. Maybe I should go do that now. 53 minutes. Let's start the Jeopardy music, shall we? I started drinking, so I really shouldn't ride over to AutoZone, but we're going to find an oil pan, oil drain. Uh, I charge people $50 for oil changes on Rikers, including the AMS oil. So you do it with the oil, Kev? That's pretty good. And the filter? Man, you're, you're selling yourself too cheap. You got to make 50 bucks just in labor on that. Hey, Rebel Canuck, we got one of your uh, countrymen uh, down here. Uh, Vespa chef, Eric Simple, uh, is uh, from up there. I don't remember if he's Vancouver or where he's from, but uh, yeah, he, he made the trek down here. He wrecked twice, unfortunately, this year, but he's going to start riding again tomorrow. Uh, endurance type adventures question. Uh, what's better, a monkey grom or scooter of some form? I would say a scooter is probably better just for the purity of the event. And the reason I say that is this was originally a scooter event, a scooter cannibal, hence the name it's it's devolving and i don't say that in a in derogatory or a negative term but it's devolving into just a distance rally and it's losing the scooter portion of the name uh and i'm not going to be a hypocrite i'm part of that problem because i was one of the first champions for the super cub to be able to compete uh i was the first vocal defector in the group saying hey Let's, you know, let's get an exemption for the Super Cub because everyone assumes this thing is a scooter. It's almost a scooter. You know, it's, it's the most sold vehicle in the world. Why don't we make an exception for it? And man, did I take a bunch of heat. Uh, everybody's like, oh, yeah, great. Fine. Why don't we just open it up to, you know, 300 ADVs now and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I was the I was the bastard. So anyway, uh, since then, <laughs> there have been exceptions for the monkey, the Grom, the Trail 125, the Super Cub. Uh, any of the mini motos essentially now qualify uh, with exemption status. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. It, it's a slippery slope. Eventually, it it's not the scooter cannonball anymore. It's the small bore cannonball. So I've actually had the brain fart uh, idea of maybe creating a splinter faction, and we have a small bore cannonball of some flavor. We, we need to decide on a good name for it. And we do our own events. Uh, that way we're not necessarily pissing in the pool over here. So, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think about that. Uh, I, I don't know that I want to be the guy that's responsible for it all and organize it all. But I'm sure as a community effort, we could probably come up with an idea. And we can decide the route, how long it is, where it is, all that. Uh, and that's not to belittle or diminish the scooter cannonball in any way, shape, or form. Nobody misconstrue that. David Bednarski and the guys that have put so much blood, sweat, and tears into this thing, they deserve all the praise, all the credit. These guys are heroes. They are absolute rock stars. And until you've ridden this event and seen it firsthand, what goes into it from a rider's perspective and in the back end, uh, from the data side, you know, the administrative side of it, you have not a clue what it takes to pull something like this off. Just the logistics of it are a monumental undertaking, not to mention the software, the tracking, the, the sponsorships, the organizing these hotels, because we can rent out half a hotel in one shot. So, it's uh, it's a pretty impressive undertaking, and I, I I have no aspirations or delusions of grandeur of being able to do something better, but uh, maybe we can do something different. We don't know. We'll see. Okay, so I'm trying to get back to current comments. 
I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip that. You guys are talking amongst yourselves. Joel, hey, thanks for tuning in, man. Yep, we're still scooting. I was down, but I was definitely not out, and now I'm back in the game. I'm going to wipe this oil off my boot before I end up wearing it on my clothes. I was holding my boot under uh, Neil's uh, drain spout, and it was dripping on me. Look at And I didn't realize it until I had a wet boot. What do we got? Don't we all? What was that, the three, four inch comment? External power pack on the gadgets, or is everything powered by the bike? Yes, both. Um, I have a big honking 2400 milliamp hour anchor. Uh, I think it's the Anchor Power Bank 737 or something like that. It's powering stuff in my top box for comms and uh, dedicated audio recorder, that kind of thing. <clears throat> and I use it for recharging my phones at night if I'm nowhere near uh, an outlet. We've been stealth camping behind hotels over here in grass lots and stuff like that. So I uh, I use that for a lot of chores. It's not being charged by the bike, but my other gear, like the uh, GoPro Max 360, my uh, Garmin GPS, uh, my quad lock inductive charger, all that stuff, those are powered direct by the bike. Paul, hey, from West Texas. Howdy, neighbor. Uh, well, close, somewhat neighbor. Closer neighbor than where I am now. Uh, miles before we bought something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. AutoZone's okay. I mean, a plastic drain pan would be fine. What am I looking at? Uh, the Dr. Penis Pulley. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Super Cub is a scooter. No, it's not. Nope, nope. Kevin, the uh, the Super Cub is not a scooter. Even by Honda's definition, it is an underbone motorcycle. Uh, and the differentiator for the, the technical definition of a scooter is it has to have a unit swing arm power plant construction, meaning the engine and the swing arm is a single unit. So with a scooter, your drive housing that holds your CVT and all that uh, is made directly to the engine casing and your pivot point for the swing arm, if you want to call it that, is what's mounted to the frame. So the entire engine and rear drive assembly is your swing arm. A motorcycle, by contrast, the engine is fixed mounted in the frame and you have a chain drive or some belt drive or something else that reaches the rear wheel through the swing arm. So your swing arm point is kind of what defines what a motorcycle versus a scooter is. If the engine is fixed mounted in the frame, it's not a scooter by popular definition anyway. The Yamaha uh, T-Max kind of blurs that definition a little bit, and so does the Honda Silverwing, the 600. Uh, those both use a hybrid mounting arrangement to where the engine is not, not actually on the swing arm portion, it's on the frame. So anyway. Uh, anyone run Honda with the pedal? What, moped? No, nobody could run that. I mean, we're talking about minimum 3,000 mile event here. There's no way you could run a, a moped that does 27, 32 miles an hour, something like that cross country. It wouldn't be permitted on the highways. We end up on public highways where the speed limits are 65, 75. You'd literally be asking to get yourself killed. Uh, I hope I answered Rebel. I'm sorry. I, I'm so late on it. GKC, uh, motorcycle cannonball record, 32 hours, 52 minutes. Yeah, yeah, That's this is not the motorcycle cannonball. This is scooter cannonball, but yeah, yeah, I've done it in, I've done it in 36 hours, but I'm not going to say when or where that was, but I will tell you that I was on an FJ 1200 when I did it. Excuse me. Uh, Europe city trip in Texas so far, egg shape about 1200 miles. Cool. Well, uh, it'd be nice to get other States involved in it. Maybe we could do, a uh, southern USA uh, parabola of some flavor. Maybe pick it up over in uh, New Mexico somewhere and run it kind of up in a loop, maybe through as high as middle Oklahoma and back down, uh, you know, further south on the coast or something like that. Or just get it centralized to where we can pick up more people. I don't know. We'll see. Organizing Cannonball, logistical nightmare. You've got that right. And they have done a wonderful job. Yeah. Not only with logistics, but software and everything else. Uh, the app that we're using on our phones 
is so much better this year than it was last year. I mean, it's just light, light years better than it was. Julie, hey, thanks for tuning in from down under. Um, Julie, your you and your husband watch, don't you? It seems like uh, I remember your husband was in her or something like that, and we chatted, and both of you watch or something like that. It's been a long time. It was comments on YouTube, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, had to do stuff. Yeah, I finally got the margarita. I had to borrow a room key to get it. Man, what kind of bullshit is that? When I shave off my beard, I look like I'm, you know, 16, but do I look like I'm older than 16, 21, whatever age is the magic age of consent? Come on. Uh... Oil on the boot, waterproofing. Yeah, exactly. These are waterproof boots, but, oh, man, look at this. Hey, great segue. Gear review, and I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. Damn mosquitoes. Look at this. Let's see if I can get this up in front of the camera. These are TCX waterproof uh, Evo Explorer. Sorry, WP Evo Explorer. This just happened yesterday. I didn't notice this. How did that happen? My soul is separating. These are pretty new boots. I just pulled them out of the box maybe, I don't know, three months ago. But it looks like the sole is separating. And these are Gore-Tex. They're expensive boots. I'm going to have to seal this up. I don't know. I'll clean them up real good. I'll put some uh, black silicone or something in here and try to, you know, or, uh, rubber cement or whatever and seal this back to the rest of the boot. And this is TPU leather or I don't know what that is. But, man, that's not cool because I bet that's going to leak when it gets wet. It pisses me off. $250 boots. I'm going to put somebody else on camera. We got somebody doing maintenance over here. Uh, Brent. Hey, Brent. Thanks for tuning in. Back on the scoot. Yep, it's running good. I flogged it all day, full throttle. Wide open throttle all day long. Uh, got great gas mileage, no problems. Uh, they all starting in the same city. Okay, Glenn, that's interesting. So it's a loop instead of uh, end to end. That's that's cool. k &N filter, 540 synthetic. Pins oil. Cool. Yeah, the k &N filters are kind of a contentious topic. Uh, sometimes people say they're great. Other people say they're not as good. What I can tell you from my years of racing uh, on and off road is they're great for track vehicles that you're going to be doing frequent maintenance on. They're not so great for street vehicles uh, in some cases. The k &N filter media does flow more air. Uh, that's obvious, you know, that, that cotton gauze that they use, but it's not quite as good as, at filtration as a paper media filter, you know, a traditional air filter. So kind of what I, I resort to is if it's going to be a long haul machine like this PCX, uh, where I don't want to worry about maintenance near as much uh, and do as frequent a maintenance to less common items like the air filter, uh, oil is a more common item, for, for example. Uh, I stick with paper filters uh, and I, I don't mess with it. Uh, and that also goes for those reusable stainless steel mesh oil filters and bigger bikes. Don't use those things. They're a bad idea. You can use them for a track bike or something that's going to be frequently maintained, you know, like every damn day after track day, but don't use them on road going uh, bikes because they don't filter as well as paper or proper uh, filter media. Uh, the manufacturers have done their, their research. They know what they're doing. And uh, you can even go to big channels like uh, project farm and stuff like that. And he's done pretty extensive tests, and it, it all bears out to what we've all known for decades uh, is a lot of those high-performance items don't filter as well as the traditional counterparts. So, anyway. Uh, all 17 worth. Let's do a tour to Texas. Hell yeah, Nate. Let's do it. Hey, Nick. How's it going, man? You working tonight? We're over here in Blytheville, Arkansas. And I'm getting sloppy. Not yet. I, I'm barely tapping this thing. This whole monkey is uh, its like a 44-ounce margarita, and they mix it strong, boy, let me tell you. But it's frozen, and it's going down. I'm telling you. Sweating my ass off all day today in 95-plus degree temperatures. Um, Baba Ganoush. Whoops. I don't know what that was. Roy. Broken front panel. Yeah. Yeah, my bad. What's a quasi-foul? I'm going to try to compile some of my video, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, uh, and I'll do a couple of shorts from the first day, but that was my fault. I ran that thing into the back of uh, uh, Tyler, his ADV 150. <laughs> we were rushing over to get 
the photos uh, before the start of the cannonball. And they were at 6.30 a.m. sharp on the pier, and we were running late. And I was rushing. I, it was my bad. I was 100% my fault. I take 100% culpability in the event. Uh, we were going over a highway overpass. Tyler is sitting here. I'm sitting here, you know, diagonally behind him. And we're at a highway overpass to take a left and go this way on the access road. And there's traffic coming this way. So we we're waiting for an open spot. And Travis saw an opening and he let off the brakes and started to roll. And I looked to my right over here to see if there were any cars coming. It was clear. So I rolled and hit the gas. And as I looked my head back toward him, he had stopped. And I just ran right into the back of him. Doofus. Doofus. Rookie mistake. What is wrong with you, man? Never, never roll where you're not looking. So anyway, uh, he, he had to stop suddenly because some guy was uh, like acting like he was going to come across this crosswalk, but the guy stopped. So anyway, Travis stopped. I didn't know he had stopped. I rolled the throttle and started heading toward him, and I saw it at the very last second. I hit the brakes and swerved away, but I still ran the left nacelle or, you know, the left uh, front fairing right into his exhaust and just shattered out my fairing. It just disappeared, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, screw it, man. Let's go. Let's go. I don't care. I don't care. Let's go. We got to get that picture. Uh, the unfortunate casualty was I also broke his uh, right rear turn signal and it was just dangling, hanging down, but we taped it back in place. It still works fine. It's just, you know, plastic is broken. So the next day he dropped it in a parking lot over on the front left side and broke the front left turn signal. So now he needs two turn signals. <laughs> My fairing panel is only 46 bucks. I'm not concerned. Um, they consider a scooter a motorcycle, need an M1 to ride it. Yeah. We don't have graduated licensing here in the U.S. Um, I don't know where you're from, Baba Ganoush. But yeah, uh, countries with uh, graduated licensing tiers, yeah, they, it depends on the displacement, power output, all that. Here in the U.S., we've got one motorcycle endorsement, and it doesn't matter what it is, you know. Once you're 16 and you get your motorcycle endorsement, you can ride a Hayabusa 1300. Uh, Neil is chill. He is awesome. He is so relaxed. He's double retiree. He goes where he wants, when he wants, does what he wants, when he wants, only when he wants. <laughs> he, he's not in a hurry for anything. Uh, too young. Cushman scooter had a fixed frame mounted engine. Difference is transmission. Yes and no. Uh, but I, again, I'll argue that point. Uh, modern definition says unit construction swing arm. Uh, if you look at pretty much any of the popular documentation that's out there. So there is actually an exemption for Cushman's in the scooter cannonball if somebody wanted to run one. But that would be a hell of an undertaking because they're not that durable. Uh, but yeah, uh, even Vespa's, it, it, some people say it comes down to transmission. And that's where we'll, we'll also argue the point. Older Vespas have a geared transmission. Uh, they still have, uh, I think, I'm not sure if they have a belt drive or what it is, but they have a geared transmission. They've got a gear shifter and uh, like three-speed transmission. So having a CVT is not a definition of a scooter. And that's a, that's a very important distinction. Uh, it's always, always comes down to unit construction swing arm. Uh, da, 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 Jeff Goldblum, yeah, I'm way late. I'm trying to catch up. Tat cannonball. Holy crap, Joseph. All right. Well, if you're if you're willing to do it, uh, I might join you on that endeavor. But you know what kind of torture you're talking about? The tat is brutal all alone, let alone doing it across the country. Cushman had a two or three speed tranny, but centrifugal clutch. Yeah, it's not just centrifugal clutch, though. Uh, the CVT is uh, what most people say has to be a scooter, blah, blah. Yo, what's going on, man? Like and subscribe. Be sure to like and subscribe, this fine man says. Uh, watching from the Philippines. Holy crap. Thanks, Marvin. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Troy Fairweather. Uh-oh. Is he bashing me? What are you laughing at? No, Neil is doing that. Okay. Not bashing me. I got called an asshole today, but to my face. He was the highlight of my day. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Go fuck your hat. Pardon my French. Um, <laughs> we we passed some guys in the dirt, uh, in the gravel. He was trying to go slow so he didn't have, you know, dust and silt in his face. 
and then we were the assholes because we passed him. <laughs> Sorry, dude, man, you drive in the dust. That's what's going to happen. You got to learn to suck it up, buttercup. I'm a motocross uh, ADV guy. You got to learn how to eat that dust. Grit in the teeth is part of the game, Jack. Uh, what do we got? Trying to catch up. I'm losing my place. Losing my place. Alabama teenager. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, if Alabama teenagers look as old as I do, I feel sorry for them. Uh, Quasi man, awesome to see me. Hey, thanks. Well, I appreciate that. Any interesting events? No, our our day was fairly event free, uh, or it was uh, issue free. Let's call it. Uh, John, I don't know his rider number. He's got the uh, hopped up ADV one hundred and sixty with the custom fuel tank in the seat with the you know the fuel cap thing in the seat. He put an, another PCX one hundred and fifty fuel tank under his seat in the trunk tray thing. Anyway. We hadn't even made it to the first bonus point. We saw him on the side of the road, and he had uh, blown a belt. So luckily, Dino, Dino, man, I hope you're watching. Uh, the two belts that you sent us, one of them I gave to Ron uh, last night as a spare because you provided me the other one. So game on. And Robbie also gave me one. Robbie, Robbie, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for helping me out of a jam. Uh, so we had spare belts coming out of our ears. And uh, we gave one of those belts to John and he got his scoot back on the road because he shredded a belt you know, before even the first checkpoint today. Uh, that was the only drama that we saw other than gravel that was totally unexpected that we hit at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> there's a pucker moment for you. You're going along on a blacktop and suddenly you come up over a hill and there's no more blacktop. It's gravel. Oh, shit. Pucker. I think I need to pull like six inches of that vinyl seat out of my ass now. Thank you. Um, we didn't go down. Nobody went down on our troop. Uh, there was one guy that we heard about indirectly. I can't verify this, uh, but they hit a deer and broke a collarbone and some other stuff. So uh, we may potentially have another casualty of the game today. We don't know. Uh, duct tape and a marker, man. I don't know what I'm missing. Boot, no problem sewing them together anymore. Yeah, and I don't know what the deal is. Uh, yeah, that's how far behind I am. I don't know. I'll, I'll sort that. I'm going to go to the bottom. I see what I missed. Uh, these comments come in in batches really late, so I'm going to go backwards. Yes, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll uh, you'll find a way to to condense some new uh, unknown elements in your sphincter at that moment. Uranium two thirty five. Uh, oh dear, no dear. I don't know if I told you guys that. I don't remember if that was in my live stream that I did last night. Uh, I almost hit a deer coming down Los Alamos, uh, the mountain, in the dark. Uh, it was like 42 degrees, cold as balls. I'm shivering my tail off, and I'm braking, braking, braking. I'm alternating brakes coming down this huge, like 18 or 20% grade out of the mountain. And uh, I come around a blind corner in the dark. And I just know there's going to be an animal somewhere. It's, it's Murphy's law for my universe. And uh, I'm in the brakes and I come around this corner and there is about a six or 800 pound buck standing in the middle of the road. I don't know if it was an elk or a deer. He was huge. His back was taller than my head. And uh, there's no way I was going to avoid hitting him. I was full in the brakes, slowing from 35 miles an hour. I got down to about 20 and he was standing sideways square right in front of the scoot. And I know that at least two of my cameras captured it. My 360 got it, and I hope my dash cam got it, uh, but I didn't have my helmet cam running. And you can hear his hoofs going, <laughs> scrambling on the pavement, and he's trying to go from left to right out of my path. And I literally could have smacked him on the ass as I went by. It was that close, and I think I may have actually hit him. So the camera's going to tell the tale, but I haven't reviewed the footage yet. Good stuff. And let me tell you, that adrenaline rush was enough to keep me awake for the rest of the night. Okay, 82. 82, he says, hit a deer. He broke his collarbone is what I heard. Is that right? And totaled the scoot. So who is 82? Do we know? All right. So you guys check it out on the cannonballrun.com site. Look up 82. Find out who it is. Uh, that's the unfortunate rider that hit a deer. We had a uh, bobcat 
run across the highway uh, about, I don't know, 30 yards in front of us. And he made it across so fast from right to left, we barely saw him. But I got that on dash cam. Bingo. We had a albino raccoon. Albino raccoons. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. An owl. Okay. Down, he thought his helmet was in the mouth or something, and just came down. And he clawed his head helmet. So he made contact with him. Oh yeah. Nice. So we have attack owls on the cannonball. A couple deer down. Yeah, yeah. I saw down deer. Yeah. At least it wasn't our group that hit it. Yeah, he's a Texan, by the way. Micah, Eddie, how did they down it? I mean, they have a. So who had the gun? Not one of our group. The, the, uh, uh, Park Rangers or. Uh, far, not far away, the, uh, wildlife. Guys. Wildlife guys. Okay. Yeah, in Texas, you know, we carry. You're from Texas, you know. Yeah, I've had to put down a cow. I've had to put down a couple of deer, a couple of dogs. Unfortunately, yeah. I have one of those sticks for the uh, alligators. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, a zap stick, basically. Yeah. No, I just use a, a handgun. If you know, if I'm out hunting and I run across one that's injured, I use a rifle. Uh, so, Holes, uh, how do I say your name? I'm always butchering it. I just say barbarian. Holes, Holes, Hiles, the barbarian. Um, trade off of aftermarket parts is longevity. Yes, you're correct. Uh, generally speaking, it's durability and longevity, but yeah, uh, I, I won't quibble <laughs> verbiage there. Uh, my issue with that Dr. Pulley variator or my situation, not my, my issue with it is it lasted 10,000 miles. I beat the shit out of that thing for 10,000 miles and it, it ran great, you know, great top speed, great fuel economy, everything. And it just decided to shit the bed. Yeah, the alarm works. Hit the fucking button. Um, it worked great right until it didn't. <laughs> and it decided to didn't when I'm in California. So, yeah, they're fun. I don't know. We'll see. I might put the sliders back in there, but I'm not doing the variator. Uh, all right. To current. No Bigfoot? No, not yet. Uh, 82 is Wax from Alabama rides a Vespa. Okay. Yeah, so uh, if that's the same wax that I know, it used to be ass wax. Man, that's a shame. I hope he's okay. Uh, Hylas. Hylas. Okay, Hylas the Barbarian. Cool. I'm going to call you Hylas from now on. No Bigfoot. No, no Bigfoot. Uh, ate all the dust on that run, too. Which one? Which one, Kevin? Which one are we talking about? I got to go. Wax from Alabama. Wax. Micah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was ass wax before, I think. He changed his name to not be so incendiary. Ass wax. It's not as bad as sex wax. You know, that's a, a surfboard stuff. Not measuring wind speed. What? We did 100 miles of loose stone last year, high speeds. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Excelsior, you're talking about uh, the uh, Texas Tiddlers. Yeah, and I was behind. Uh, I, I think I posted most of that video. If anybody's interested, go check the channel later. Uh, look for the Texas Tiddler stuff. I've got two videos on it. And I was behind the pack with like 10 guys. And uh, <laughs> I was eating so much dust. It was just a, a gray out, a, a brown out, a tan out, whatever you want to call it. You couldn't see shit in front of me uh, for a long stretch of the road, like half mile, because there were so many scoots going through on this dry silt. It was just elevating everything. And I was eating it, man. I blew brown boogers for like three days. It was a gross, gross, man. Gross. Yeah. Hope he's okay. Oh dear. All right. So I'm back to current. I think I'm going to go to the wax is rookie. Okay. There was somebody on the forums that used to be ass wax. Uh, and he rode in 21, I believe. Tiddler, yep, got it. <laughs> Giggles. <laughs> yeah, quasi after dark, and it's getting dark. I never did my oil change, but I'm not concerned. It's a fast thing to do. Uh, I do need to find a uh, an oil pan, and my other cohorts in crime left me here. When I get to talk, and I just hang out with you guys and chat. 
because you're why I do this. You are why I do this. All of you, Jay, do I know what type of bushing that failed? Yeah, it's well, no, we have to probably inquire to Dr. Pulley. Uh, and I'm trying to remember their proper, uh, business name. Their trade name is Dr. Pulley, but it's actually something else. And they're out of Taiwan. If I remember right, it, it's a it's a brass bronze composition. It looks like to me. Uh, we'd have to go to somebody that really knows that shit. Like uh, Avi, if you guys watch his channel, Ave, which is uh, Arduino versus Evil. But he's a. <laughs> if you never watched his channel, he's amazing. He's, he's funny as hell. He's a Canadian, uh, and he's a laugh a minute. But he is a master machinist, and uh, uh, he he knows his stuff. But he goes in and he he does failure analysis on a lot of things. Um, whatever it is, it's a brass bronze composition of some kind, sacrificial bearing, you know, typical uh, self-lubricating against a, a harder machine metal like hardened steel. Uh, it gave up and I don't have it present with me right now to show you. I do have pictures and video of it when it came out. Robbie can has it right now at his house. He graciously decided to take that. I'm still talking and Neil's giving me shit. See, I told you. Um <laughs> You walked into it, buddy. Swinging door, whack, right in the face. Yeah, and I'm I'm halfway through this. I'm starting to feel it, guys. Oh, man. They mix this shit strong, don't they? Holy fuck. I got a lot more to go. Yeah, they're lighting this up. It's got some rum in it. Maybe some tequila. Um, anyway, uh, that bushing went totally sideways. I mean, it, it's gone. Um, this is what it looks like on my end. I get the highlight comments. Neil is looking hey. at my, uh, my, my screen. I wish I could screenshot this and show you what it looks like on my end, but I get to see all your comments on the right hand side. I'm going to, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Hopefully I don't kill the stream when I do it. Oh, I it yeah. I take a screenshot. I'll send it to you in a minute or I'll, I'll put it up on the stream as a second screen. Um, anyway, I highlight comments that I want to uh, talk to. Uh, so yeah, basically the brass bushing in there, it's totally gone. I mean, there might be, yeah, he's curious why it happened, too. I want to know. I, it, apparently, once it starts wallowing, if there's enough slack that it can start doing this, well, obviously, it's going to self-destruct. It's just a matter of time because it's going to set up oscillations, and that's just going to exaggerate the wear. But the fact that it waited, I know, it peed on my boot. It, 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 it pissed on my boot. I had my boot sitting right here, and it was dripping on me. Don't get near it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs a litter box. Um, <laughs> see if it can cover up its mess. Uh, so it decided to wait until I was in basically Los Alamos or later. It was after, no, no, sorry, uh, uh, Roswell. You talking about the bike? The, the scoot, the CVT. It decided to shit the bed. Pretty much on the way out to California, when we were almost to California, that's when the belt problem started. And then I made it one day through Cannonball, and it just said, eh, eh, out in the desert, in the worst possible place. Thank you, Murphy. I appreciate your ruling my universe. Fuck off and die. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was like a guy named Murphy or what? No, no, no. Oh, Murphy, right. as in Murphy's, comp Murphy's Law. So, I mean, the worst possible place it could fail. It was 110 plus degrees out there with 130 plus waves rolling off of the uh, the friggin uh, desert. Where were we? What desert was that? That was the. Oops. Yeah, I'm tired. No, day one when I blew the first belt. No, no, no. California, the, the Mojave. There we go. Mojave Desert. I was out there in the Mojave Desert, and it decided to shit the bed. I was like, oh, my God, the worst place you could do this. I was talking about it, you know, several different times. How bad would it be to break down out here? Thanks for jinxing it, jackass. Let's go. I might lose you guys as I'm walking. We're going to go survey our stealth camp while I discuss. So, anyway, yeah, that's when it decided to eat itself. So, I don't know what kind of material that bearing is made of. It's a brass bronze composition of some kind. Hey, hey, here's Johnny. Did the guys find you? Yes. Johnny Powell. Yes. They wanted to borrow your tire changing apparatus. We did it. Good. You're the man. Okay, now you got to do mine. I'm fucking with you. I figured what? I took it serious. Uh, I was 
pretty close to second, and now I've dropped down to fourth. Had a couple yeah, four days today. We had lunch. So you were running hard. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Good yeah, for I've you, man. Third, I've been third. Uh, very close to second yesterday, but now dropped back. But I'm going to go hard tomorrow. You know, there's no money for this, right? Just the glory. It's it's just you get one of these big brass balls trophy. Who's got the bigger balls? So uh, I lost my exhaust today. Lost your exhaust? How the hell did that happen? I don't know. Got to be details, man. I you don't know. What do you mean, like the whole thing? No, the uh, the pipe that goes from the to the header exhaust header comes out, mm -hmm. and then the exhaust is it still gone? I didn't even yeah. notice. Check it out. Holy shit! Wait, we got a we got a reverse course here. I never thought to look at the right side of the bike. So, the the muffler's still on there. The silencer is there, but there's a little piece. Oh, missing. oh yeah, yeah. There's there's a there's a gap. This is not a wireless muffler, ladies and gentlemen. There's a gap here. There there's no not supposed to be air it's space. It's supposed to be metal to metal. The, yeah, there there's this metal tube. It's called a header, and that header doesn't exist anymore. Well, the header's down here. But it, this set the the silencer has a little gooseneck. Okay, so this and is that, a mid pipe. It's a mid pipe. It's a mid pipe, and it so, was welded, and it came off. Sorry for the lighting. There's no light. Mid pipe missing. Mid pipe no here. Last night I came in. You know, I came in last night. And I'm like, bike sounds a, sounds like it's running just a little bit rough. <laughs> running rough. What is going it's on? It's a little loud. I've got bit. I've got a NASCAR. Just tiny bit. It was just like I was just like, man, is it valves loose or something? Whatever. And then. Uh, 20 or 30 minutes into the ride today, all of a sudden it was like, I thought it was a truck. It sounded, yeah. it sounded like air, like, yeah, what do like you call a, it? Like open header for open truck, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what the hell is that sound? And at first I thought the whole muffler fell off. Yeah. And so I lost some time this morning. I rode back and forth a couple of times on the highway trying to see my big old muffler. Yeah. Couldn't find it. And then I well, found the muffler's looked, still there. Yeah. I finally looked at yeah, yeah. the little pipe and it was missing. Gone. Just fucking gone. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I finally found a donor. Okay. So there's a guy with a balloon engine on his best book, GTS. And, uh -huh. um, I worked out a deal to uh, swap and give him some cash. <laughs> Glenn, one of my guys, says, maybe you need to check your Bluetooth app and see if you can find an app to fix it. It's not paired. It's no longer paired. It, it's no longer paired. And this guy's alarm is still fucking going off. I'm going to I'm going to reach under the hood and I'm going to disconnect that son of a bitch. It's not hard. It's one wiring harness and I know right where it is. So we're about to do surgery. Oh, he's going to do surgery. Cool. You guys want to watch Johnny Pow do surgery? No. Okay, I won't I won't I won't run up his ass like I did for the tire changes uh, pre cannonball. <laughs> that was unscripted and uh, unasked. I just kind of did it. But it was fun though. We got to see the CO2 in action. Yeah, twisted ankle. Oh, you twisted your ankle. Okay, spill, spill. See the largest ankle. You, on your your goose egg sized yes, over here. Over here. Yes. And what had you done that with? Uh, yesterday was turning at an intersection. Right Trivial turn. maneuver. Yeah, I mean it could have happened in my neighborhood mm -hmm. or my you know a mile from my house. Right. I know. Uh, I was just turning on at an intersection. Merge like it was one of those where there was a light. It was two highways, uh -huh. and there was a light, and there was a little tiny like yield curve, you know. Right. And I was in that. I looked, and there was nobody there. I gave it gas, and the bike went sideways. Oh. And I almost ate so shit. So just sand or gravel yeah. or okay, okay, in loose surface. And yeah. I almost ate shit, and I didn't, and I recovered, but I guess instinctively or somehow my foot hit the pavement, and my pivot it just yanked right. Ouch. Did you see uh, Eric Semple, Scooter Chef, or yeah. Vespa Chef? Did you uh, see his ankle? No. Oh, he, he ate it going 35 miles an hour, and his is like purple. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I'm lucky yeah. mine's a, at least for now a normal color. Yeah, that's a twist. Yes, it's twisted. It's I'm, not, not, I'm not diminishing your injury. No, no. I mean, I'm walking you're, around. You're lucky. Kind of okay. Yeah, yeah. Good on you. It's not a sprain. I think it's more. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be such a girl, Neil says. <laughs> well, we, we're checking out this wireless I'm exhaust. Really, this wireless exhaust is pretty yeah, cool, man. It is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that. That's an, an air gap safety system, is what that is. I'm not going to be up Johnny's ass this whole time, but I'm gonna I'm just going to show kind of what's going on over my here for a minute, is, and then I'm going to leave him alone so he can he can scream and my problem moan is and moving around with this bum leg. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. So it's just there's no fucking sympathy here, man. This is cannonball. 
<laughs> it's three bolts. Why does, I, uh, just, I just got to get. Why does the. Well, let's go right there. You don't scare me. Hope Does it doesn't excite you? My dad. From Texas, that's our point. They're everywhere. But they have margaritas, so that excites me. You know, I just look at. Yeah. Cocksucker. Well, they let you bring them outside. That's the question. Do you have to present a room key? No. Are, are chips and salsa now contraband? Fuckers. They have chips and salsa. I know, but they wouldn't let me have this without a fucking room key. I'm serious. I gotta go see if I have a room there. Uh, you need a headlamp. You want his or mine? Oh, oh no. We'll Save it. it. Okay, back to comments. Sorry, guys. I'm dicking off. It's late. It's quasi after dark. <laughs> it does sense oxygen now. <laughs> it's That's your oxygen sensor, sir. It's oxygen, you know, open air. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Zip tie some pipe insulation to it. <laughs> we can use some soda straws, right? We'll just bundle a bunch of them up. It'll it'll transfer the gases from one side to the other, right? Do you have an HDMI port on the wireless exhaust? <laughs> uh, let's fuck with Johnny Knight. It is. That's my spotter. Made in Taiwan. <laughs> Johnny writing. Yes, it's Vespa. Johnny riding Vespa. What Vespa is this, Johnny? GTS 300 2010. G GTS 300 Super. 2010 model. Super. Super. It's 300 Super. Made in China. Yeah, made in India. Made in Italy. Good rock. Good rock. We need we need the the Italian chingrish and yeah. <laughs> light. Show the light. What light? The light. Oh oh, Kevin. The rear bolt broke. The rear bolt sheared. Rear bolt it's sheared it. off. Holy sheesh. Look at that. It's, it's in it. there. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yep, it's there. That's what done it. So all the vibration. Did you go off-road? Is that where it hit the bed? I've been off-road all week, dude. <laughs> oh, you mean like actually like yeah, a today. golf? Like, yeah. No, just whenever it happened. No. Last night, I guess. Yeah, okay. I'm trying I to get my... Meant, like, the, um... he's, he's getting the exhaust off here. But yeah, we'll, we'll get in there in a second. His lower support bolt sheared off. It's like the stud is in the carrier arm. But now we know that Johnny Powell doesn't like wearing lights on his head. <laughs> Johnny Powell doesn't. Uh, well, I can't even see in there anymore. He's, he's, he's superhuman. He doesn't no, need so light. It matter, it like the he's, light would be shining on the side of the bike. He's superhuman. He has x-ray vision. Yeah. Well, that sucks, man. You'll need a tap to get that out. Got the little Hello? You're on camera. Hello, Lisa. Hello. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, what are you looking you, for? Did you ride together the whole night? Yeah, we rode. No, who? Wait. You and Ron. Ron, he was over there. Uh, we're supposed to be doing an oil change somewhere eventually. Oh, I was, I was I've been dicking off online. online. Okay. Yeah. You, are, is it you we'll, too? we'll be riding together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, I've been dicking off online all night. We're supposed to do an oil change on his and mine. So I don't know. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's quick. Oil yeah. changes on the PCX take five minutes. Yeah. It's I easy. Did you ever figure out what your overheating was? Overheated first day. Have you checked your coolant? Check your check your overflow reservoir. Make sure the reservoir is full. And when the engine is cold, do not open the, the radiator cap. Yeah. When the engine's cold, yeah. open it and make sure that it's full to the top of the cap area. Yeah. Good rock. Good rock. I know this guy from somewhere. This is Zamdrang, the famous, infamous Zamdrang on YouTube. Uh, this is Tyler. And uh, he's the one that I uh, ass munched. I, I munched Tyler's ass on the first day. <laughs> this is you can't see it real well in the lighting here, but you got some white paint transfer right on the top of this uh, Yeah, exhaust cap. I ran my Nacelle right. Here. Oh, oh, there you go. There's lighting. I ran my PCX right into this and Busted out my fairing on this and I killed his uh, his turn signal. I snapped it off and it was just hanging very sad face dangling uh, Yeah so anyway, we fixed it with some clear Gorilla Tape, and then 
we hoped that that would be the extent of his injuries. And then he I... had a moment of lapse of concentration in high wind in a parking lot. <laughs> oh, I just made it worse. Oh, you made it worse. Fuck, you got to tape it down now. Look at that. Uh, this this uh, Dumbo ear went wonky wonky. Uh, it laid itself over. He scraped up his fairing in the, you know, the, the corners all in here. It laid over in 40 mile an hour winds, just kind of lopped off of the uh, side stand. So we told him uh, no side stand in high winds, center listen, stand only. Listen, center stand only. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> The winds are brutal out here, man. They're brutal. Uh, where, the, where we were, anyway. Oh yeah, he's he's got the he has the performance curve. Uh, you can't see it in the lighting. I apologize, but yeah, he's got the high performance curve levers now. You know, people pay big money for this. This is this is high performance. Excellent. At least, at least two tenths into every corner. Yeah, yeah, man. This this added the cornering advantage in the twisties. <laughs> so yeah, that got bent out. Uh, Doug was saying that he did a similar thing on his and he soaked it in boiling water. He took the lever off, soaked it in boiling water and gently bent it back. Neat trick. I never tried that. I never tried that. I just buy a new lever. Well, no, I think he said boiling water, boiling water. Watch me. I'm either going to ride through the gap and put it in the lawn. I'm going to fall over. Something's going to happen. Okay, let's do it. Neil right. Neil's going to go off roading, and he thinks he's going to dump it. So let's find out. I don't think so. Is this my drink? No, that's your drink. Where's my drink? Oh, my drink. Oh, my drink is over there with Johnny. <laughs> See, that's what happens. Late at night, quasi after dark, and Johnny gave up. Johnny Johnny's wireless now. Johnny disappeared, just like his mid pipe. I don't even know if I'm still online. We're two twenty four into this. I've got two bars of signal. Good luck, people. I'm walking. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Leave the thumbs up. Subscribe, like, comment. Do all that stuff because this stream might not stay alive. The further I go from civilization. Ah, oh, he made it. He bumped it over the curb and didn't eat shit. <laughs> We're hoping he eats shit on camera. We've got cones. Is this like an obstacle course? What is this? ADV in it, baby. Yes, we are hoodlums. Yes, we will do whatever is necessary to secure our uh, fun and games. And this is our campsite for tonight, guys. It's dark. Uh, I still have three bars of coverage. I think we're online. Um, and the margarita is having fun with me. I'm having trouble walking straight. <laughs> What do they put in this stuff? It must be to kill you. Um, yeah, we've got two trees. Unfortunately, they're not close enough for me to hang my hammock. Uh, I did hang my hammock in uh, the gazebo behind the previous hotel this morning. Uh, that was fun. It actually was quite nice. I liked it. Uh, no setup. I was uh, hanging in midair in suspension in about three minutes flat. I enjoyed that. Um, tonight, I'll be tent on the ground, probably in the shade right here because those will keep me up at night. So Tyler, Neil, and myself, trio right here in the shade. All right. I will look at questions and comments now. I've been uh, neglecting you all. I apologize. 32 ounce. No, I think that's bigger than 32. I could be wrong. Let's look at some light. And man, I don't know what kind of mix they're using on this stuff, but holy bejeminous. Bejeminous. No, it doesn't say. I think it's a 32 ounce, but yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Top shelf. Top shelf, not skimping on the alcohol. I'm not driving, so, you know, nobody hate on me, okay? Nobody hate. Roy, thanks for tuning in, man. I appreciate it. Uh, no, this is it for me because I've got a ride tomorrow. I don't want to be foggy break into the bus and sleep in there yeah i know uh this isn't the uh this isn't the the bus boys i named them the bus boys they've got a school bus a, a longer one this is not the one they have one that's uh square nose front uh mercedes diesel in the back and they've got a handicap lift on the side of it they modified the handicap lift to become a bike lift and they just raise the bikes up and ride them right in. Oh man, that's so slick. And they're going to be selling it. So anybody that is interested, uh, we've got 128 of us online right now. 
anyone that might be even moderately interested in a bus conversion. These guys out of South Carolina bought a bus. Uh, it's the Bradisher on uh, Instagram. And I don't know if they've got other YouTube channels or anything, but the Bradisher. Uh, he's got a pretty active uh, Instagram channel. They're going to be selling their bus at the end of this when we get to South Carolina. And inside hint, they said that it's going to be like 17.5. This thing is ripe for RV conversion. They've already pulled a lot of the stuff out of it. It's got a great motor in it. Uh, Mercedes diesel with like 250K on it or something like that, which is nothing. Those things do a million miles. They did all the mechanicals, put fresh batteries, uh, fresh brake lines, fresh front steering and suspension. It's crazy. They did a lot of work on it. Um, they got it from government auction, whatever, but they're going to be selling it. So I'll do a live when they're ready to sell it. I'm going to put the for sale sign that they put in the windshield on a live stream and help them, you know, advertise the fact that this thing is for sale. And if I had 17.5, I would just buy it before any of you bastards could bid on it. Anyway. Uh, where was I? Tie to that. Yeah, I wish. 32 ounce. Yes, we did that. Light over here. Uh, no. Johnny disappeared, so I don't know what the light is. I'll ask him. Is he there? High performance dangling turn signal. <laughs> yeah. The, those Dumbo ear signals, they break so easy. They're not very durable at all. They don't have much flex to them. Um, most off-road bikes, you know, I'll use my XT250 as an example. They've got a big bellowed uh, rubber flexi housing uh, on the end of them, and you can whack them, and they don't break. They'll bend, but they don't break. So anyway. Here's Pim. Pim, right? Pim? Yeah, yeah, Pim. Yeah. I didn't fuck up your name today. Thanks. Yeah. Pim. How's it going? From uh, where are you in Canada? Uh, I'm from Montreal. Montreal. Originally from Amsterdam. Amsterdam. He's yeah. a Dutchman. Yeah. A Dutchman that uh, speaks five languages. Name them. What are they? Uh, well, there's, of course, the Dutch. Dutch? English, German, yeah. French, Spanish, Turkish, and a little bit of... Can you uh, count? Fuck, we're at seven. Oh, shit. No, See? No, I'm sorry. See? <laughs> See? Japanese. A little bit of Japanese. Japanese. All right. You're better than me, man. I'm quadlingual, but I'm not that good. Can you no, juggle? No, but I can uh, ride my bike. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not blown up, his bike hand grenaded the motor. What what happened to it? What is it first? What bike? It's a GTS 300 to 2010. It has about 100,000 miles on it. 100K. And, uh, and you, wait, 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 wait. You started the cannonball with a bike with 100,000 miles on it. Yes? Yeah. What the fuck were you thinking? I was thinking, it got me 100,000 miles, it will get me another... It'll get you 6,000 more. <laughs> yeah. I just had it serviced so, in San Diego. So his motor went kablooey. It hand grenaded... No, it was uh, no? Uh, metal shaping. So I lost the power. I couldn't go more than okay. 40. So he lost, he lost power. He started checking his oil. He's got metal shavings in the oil and decided, okay, I'm not riding it anymore. No, I, so now we're hoping that somebody else that wrecked their VPS, uh, their GTS is going to sell you their engine. Yeah. Did you hear back? Okay. I got a call on my phone and I don't know who it came from the other day. Uh, it might've been someone calling you back from my phone. He used, he used this phone uh, to call the guy that wrecked his uh, scoot in California to see if maybe he could buy the wrecked scooter, but we don't know where it is right now. So we'll find out. It's on the trailer. It's on in the support truck. Oh, it's, it's here? Yeah. Okay, so he wants to buy the engine off that wrecked bike. We'll see if that works. That doesn't work. Okay, so it does not work. It's a lost cause. I'll have to get a new one. So you don't think there's a salvage market that you can get a uh, powertrain, the rear drive unit from another bike? Uh, I think uh, the uh, scooter is... Uh, about 13 years old, it has done two tours of the uh, North American continent. Uh, I think uh, there's dents everywhere. It's rust. It's the end. Of the so you're going to start over? I already have a 300 at home because I rode actually from Montreal first to Vancouver, stored my bike for a couple of months, then I rode from Vancouver to San Diego to do the cannonball. Right. So. 
I bought a new scooter at home because uh, I flew home twice and spent like six months and I can't live without a you scooter. Want this right. Back with your bike or what? Where is this going? Yeah, back with my bike. If you see muffler, you see Doug sent him over there. Here. Over camping. Okay, sir. Where are you camping tonight? Right fucking here at the dumpster. Right fucking here, but not this particular piece of asphalt. Okay, I- that piece of grass right over there. I, I saw, I saw a grill. I saw everything. I'm always impressed by your camping abilities. Ever since Traverse City and <laughs> the, Traverse City, Michigan, Traverse we City, we camped typhoon. behind. Yeah, we camped behind that dumpster. Uh, no, it wasn't dumpsters. It was the mechanical building, and there was an AT and T communications enclosure back there. So I was behind the communications enclosure, and uh, Adrian was strung up in the trees. All I, all I know is it stormed like a bitch that night. We it was gonna invite crazy. Well, why didn't you? You like, floor, floor. We had floor for you all night. Man, long. we would have taken that floor. Dave came out and he took pictures of us, and I was like, "You missed the previous nights. We, we're doing this all the time." Well, that so so with, far tonight, uh, so far this trip, Frank. yeah. So far this trip, we've are I've already camped. Two hotels that didn't know about it. Yeah, I know. The mosquitoes are eating us. We're smacking away stuff. Right. Hey, Later. same to you, mister. So how does it feel? Chef fries again. Seems okay. The chef. Here, let's do jump and jump. See how the anchor The is. chef lives. <laughs> Feels okay. I Sorry, I left a comment up there, too, guys. Uh, yeah, starting over. Wait, 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 wait. Get that man a new scooter. Yes, this man needs a new scooter. He must have a new scooter. He's got to find one. He's got a, he's got a GTS 300 at home. I got... Uh, How you feeling? Wait. Sore. Does it ride okay? We don't know. Actually, uh, to get back home, there was somebody who didn't want to ride their scooter back to Maine. Okay. So I offered her, if you want, I can ride it to Maine for you. And the broken one? The one, yeah. I didn't have, no, it's not broken, but she's... The like, shavings. No, 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 another bl- I'm bl- a different one. one. Okay, okay, the one from Lisa Rose. Okay, and she would like to have it transported to Maine, but she doesn't want to drive it. So I okay. said, Oh, if you want, instead of having it shipped, I can ride it for you. Mm-hmm. It will be good for me, it will be good for you. Okay, and I'll be almost home. Cool. Oh, the mosquitoes are out, yeah. kids. All right, so. We're hoping good for Scooter Chef tomorrow. He wants to ride seven and eight, day seven and eight. We'll find out. Hopefully, he doesn't drop it again. Uh, he better not because we need the space in the support truck. Yes. We were full. Today. I will show you guys some amazing video behind the scenes when I get back and I can get into editing. Uh, I spent a whole day in the black van is not here. Yeah, uh, the is white. Here uh, the white van that was over there earlier tonight, we're what two thirty-five into this, so two and a half hours ago. Uh, the white God, these mosquitoes are huge. Uh, there was a Hertz rental van over there. That thing was chock full of goodies uh, yesterday. We had five scoots in there. There was no more room for anything. Uh, my scoot was one of them in there, so now they've got an empty spot. And hopefully, we don't get to capacity on that again. But anyway. Chef's scooter is out of there. Mine is out of there. Uh, Lisa's is out of there. And also, what, what Photo Girl? Lisa's driving tomorrow. Lisa's driving. Photo Girl was also in there. But we figured out it was an oil overfill mm-hmm. on her. Okay. All right. So, who was the fifth Mary, one? Mary. Uh, Mary Mary was the fifth one. Today. Where? Today, okay. Uh, she didn't think she have a, had a problem with the oil. So, she stopped. Uh, the scooter wouldn't start. Okay. So, we put her in. And, Okay. Better to not run it than destroy the engine. So what happened to uh, Tiny's? Where's Tiny's? Tiny's, he's fixing it right now. Okay. Tiny had a bad clutch and his bike was also in the support van yesterday. So yeah, we're hoping that we don't have any more major mechanicals or atrophy of the... Oh, I got to kill this mosquito. Sorry, guys. I've got a mosquito that's like eating my hand. It's so big. It's like a nickel size mosquito anyway um my phone is running low on juice it's down to 24 percent. thanks pim i appreciate it um we're gonna go over here i'm gonna find my scoot i still haven't done my oil change i could do it in the morning it's a five minute deal uh i don't know if there is a oil pan easily available tomorrow morning 
and I'm not going to let it drain on the parking lot. Anywho, I need to grab my crap, go set up my camp. That might be the end of this stream as I hook you up to a battery pack and you get to watch me set up camp. Half an abraded. I can kind of talk. I can definitely walk. All my stuff is off here. My quad lock is still lit. I need to turn that off lest it discharge my battery yet again. My, my battery died on the truck because someone left the key fucking on. How that happened, I don't know. But my key was on. Tracker died. Everything died because the uh, thing ran out of juice. And look how honest this place is. I've had my GoPro Hero 11 sitting here on the seat with a media mod, and no one has typed it. I love this group of people. Ugh. Good thing, too. There's a lot of good footage on that SD card. All right. My bag of shit is over here. Don't you love quasi after dark? I lose my filters. I don't care what I say. I call it like it is. My jacket. Ah, I need to take my jacket, don't I? All right. I'm carrying this 25 pound bag with three fingers and I'm walking across the parking lot all the way to the grass. You get to see it in action. Here's the uh, Royal that was uh, dismantled earlier. This fine gentleman has been working on it all night. How's it working? Good, good, good. All right. It's such a cool looking machine. Sorry for the rough camera work. I'm. <laughs> Fuck yes, as he says. All right. Well, we'll omit that one, but yeah. He's happy. It's working. And I'm losing all of my stuff here in one hand. I'm holding. A margarita under one arm that's almost consumed. <clears throat> a very heavy Rooka jacket and a 25-pound bag of stuff in the other hand. He's happy. He's he's singing praises with expletives. All right. I'm going over to my campsite that's unauthorized, unsanctioned, completely sideways and uh, gypsy as fuck. Pardon my French again. We are scooter cannonball gypsies. And man, I cannot hang on to that thing with three fingers. Here we go. Try again. Keep going. Keep going. You can make it. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. It's like slowly rolling out of my fingers every 10 steps. I'll make it. I'll make it. I'll make it. You watch. I'm going to make it to the tree. I'm going to make it. Oh, is he going to make it? It's slipping out of his fingers. Ah! 27 pounds, falling, 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 yeah! made it. All right, you're on a tripod. I'm going to find a battery for you. I'll try to find co current comments. Yeah, dominoes. Hell no. I'm not there, man. I'm not that drunk yet. Quasi after dark. Shit's getting real. Oh my God! You should have seen the nickel-sized bastard that was on my wrist a minute so ago. The, look, look! You can see the you can see the bite mark. So one of the locals here came in to see what was going on, huh? and I asked him, "Say, like, hey, what's it growing everywhere around here? It's not corn." He goes, "Oh, that's rice. Rice. So it's stagnant water everywhere." Exactly. He says, yep. "He goes, the mosquitoes get real bad here tonight." He says, you're "No kidding." He says, "If you're done before dark, you're lucky." Yeah, yeah. So tent is going up right now. Right. Everyone, pardon my absence. I'm going to get a battery pack. And I'm going to start unpacking. All right. We'll see you out on the road tomorrow. Yep, Ron.
All right, everybody, sorry for the long hiatus. Battery pack and uh, stool pack with all my goodies. I don't even know who's online. I am a bad host. I'm tired and sunbaked, and I need a stinking cable. Uh, that'll work for the phone. Hello. Over on the curb is easier. Yeah, you can try that or go around. The curb, the curb is shallower on the other side. Over there, on the parking lot. On the on the point. <laughs> He's trying to figure out how to get on the curb over here. We are self camping, and the accommodations are zero star, but absolutely free. And you now have power, everyone. You are on a phone that was discharging rapidly. Not anymore. I'll look at comments. I'm going to set up my tent. I'm going to be in the middle spot over there. Sorry. I left a comment way too long, but that was an appropriate comment. <laughs> Last sip is like a shot. Hell yeah, it was. It's gone, kids. Upside down. She's done. I'm going to put that away in the trash so I'm not a dick. Uh, we, uh, Mike, we are sitting in... Uh, where are we? Where are we? What city? Blytheville, Arkansas. That's how bad Cannonball Brain is, especially infused with tequila. Um, zero stars. <laughs> zero star accommodations. Yes, indeed. And you're about to see setup in zero star accommodation. Where's my spot? Somebody needs to move their scoot because I want a spot in the shade, please. What number? number? <laughs> What's going on? My mom wants to know who the librarian is. 154. Librarian. Yeah, and it's an ADV 150. We're not that. We're not that. Yeah, we're not that. If I don't find by tomorrow, I'm just going to pick. come here. I'm gonna, That's it. Okay. Librarian. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Go up there and look for the scoots. I did. I didn't get a chance to come Do you there. mind moving your scoot a little bit out so we can have spot in the shade without the oh, lights? Yeah, yeah. The tents have got to be in the, the uh, shade. Otherwise, it's going to keep me awake. Uh, yeah, fun. I'm living right here tonight. And I'm going to put you guys front and center stage for the setup. It's in the dark. I do apologize, but you shouldn't be able to see me walking around. Ugh. Both sandals. Wait, ooh. Is this guy homeless? 
Okay. Tripod stable. Quasi on the move. No, oh, no. It, it was it was either in my bag. Wrestling in a little while, and we're going to take somebody down and choke it out. It's kind of fun. Put my jujitsu to well deserved use. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'll elaborate on that. And then what they do is they time stamp it, and then you uh, I don't know if we're still online. Uh, somebody said, be careful about being out here. Apparently, this is a crime area or whatever. How do I go into it? I'm a fighter. I don't mind tussling. <laughs> as long as it doesn't involve a lethal instrument. Uh, but one of our guys, uh, Ron, is uh, ex-MMA pro. He was a pro fighter. <laughs> Come on, mess with camp. Let's see what happens. I want to see Ron get into action. <laughs> I was never pro, but I had fun. Quasi after dark. Welcome to the fun. I know we're going to piss off the hotel. I know we're going to piss them off. We got three tents side by side in their parking lot. This is going to be fun. Somebody's going to say something. It's hot as balls out here tonight. No rain flies. This is as real and raw as it gets, folks. Where are you going to live? No, go for the case. I'll move over. The lights are going to suck. Lights will suck. I can be. I mean, you can, right you can get kind of in between. You know what? I can move my bike and I'll put mine right over my bike. Yeah, that's a good idea. That'll get a spot in the shade. The lights are definitely yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, there's a dude on a super pad. Yeah, we can go side by side. I don't smell that well. I used to be such a quiet sleeper that I would wake myself up when I snore. I don't know if that's the case anymore. I think I snore sometimes and I don't even wake up. I don't even know if I still work in Yeah. I don't wake myself up and my wife would say, 
My wife abandoned me so long ago. I sleep by myself. So, yeah. I don't even know. Get this, and I'm looking for. Uh, oh crap! I lost a, a pole. That's not good. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Well, uh, Ron invited us up. He got a room. He, he got a room. I'm going to use a shower, and I have a room card. Uh, shit, I forgot what he said. It was 262 or 216. I'm bad. I'm so bad. I need to find him or find the. No, no, no. He's up. Where's the third one? Ah. Yeah, he, uh, he told me the number. I forgot. Can somebody go pee for me? Yeah, yeah, that works. There are some mosquitoes out here. There are a lot, and they are big. I had one the size of a Corsi helicopter on my left hand. That's big. Nickel size. And they're not friendly. I've never known a big friend. And they're all wet. Oh, watch up high. Watch up high. We did a Q and A tonight. What's that? You have Q and A tonight? Yeah, just a live stream. It's still going. It's right there behind us. So don't take a leak on camera. Yeah, I was gonna say thanks for showing now. <laughs> don't take a leak on camera. Oh. If anyone's still watching, I'll look at comments in a minute. I apologize. These four guys didn't know they were on camera. Scratching my nuts for the whole world to see. No uh, rain cover tonight. You would. You If anyone asks, we are security for bikes. That's how it works. Well, we sleep to watch them. <laughs> Done. Camp is set up, kids. Roll up my extras, put them away. That's that. Pillow, sheet, case for the pillow. That's it. It's hot as balls out here tonight. You got room? Okay. REI Half Dome 2 Plus. It's 10 years old. The new ones are a little bit more streamlined, but it's the same basic tent. They're two seventy nine to three fifty, depending on when you get them on set. The best tent I've ever owned. Easily the best tent I've ever owned. Oh, I forgot one piece.
the air pad, climate, uh, insulated static V recon. It's a little narrow for my taste, but it works pretty well. And it, quick to inflate, good insulation, works well. Blowjob time. I apologize. No comments. Read or responded to. I will find you in a moment. I'm going to go potty. Man, we really need to complain to the managers. The restrooms of this place are terrible. There's weeds everywhere. There's crickets. Jeez, call Orkin, would you? Thule. Zippy, zippy. Hey! Fall over. Not much. Zippy, zippy, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Pelican case, or cheap version of a Pelican case. It's got all my uh, live audio equipment. Uh, two cell phones, uh, dedicated audio recorder, you name it. Ugh, it's going to the tent. And you're going with me. If anyone's still alive, 87. A lot of people dropped off. They didn't want to see camp set up. Here's camp. This is home. Welcome to my humble abode. It's uh, about, I don't know, maybe, what, 12 square feet. I've got to get a light. Let me get a light. I must show off my home. This is home. Home on wheels. It served me so well and saves me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Right. Please understand, everyone, this is not professional video production. This is real, as it happens, unadulterated, quasi-after dark. <laughs> Quasi-inebriated after dark. Uh, yeah, come here. Come here. I implore you, fine sir. Here's home. Welcome to my humble abode. This is home. Many, many nights on the road. I've been using this REI Half Dome 2 Plus tent. Can I give them a plug? They're not a sponsor. Should I 
award them the honor. I don't know if it's printed on here. This is my REI Half Dome 2 Plus. Ah, there it is. REI Half Dome 2 Plus Tent. This thing is 10 years old. It's been all over the country at least four or five times. If I were able to put an odometer on this tent, it probably has at least 150,000 miles on it. It's been everywhere. And then again, uh, Johnny Cash, I've been everywhere, man. That tent right there is the epitome. It's been all over the place. Sand, beach, dry, wet, uh, you name it. Absolutely fabulous tent. It's lived through a couple of tornadoes, uh, at least one hurricane, and uh, lots and lots of uh, unscheduled weather events. Good stuff. It's not the best in high wind, but it does work. And I don't know how I'm tied up here. There we go. All right. I'm going to let you 94 kind folk uh, view me finishing my blowjobs. I've got one more thing that needs to be inflated. I don't think I need this sheet. I need a pillow. It's really hot out here tonight. It's probably high 80s, very high humidity. There is no rain fly going on this tent tonight. I need the ventilation and uh, no sheet, no blanket. Life on the road. That's that. So, between the uh, climate, I, I'm going to obscure the light. I do apologize. It's a climate static V recon. Um, it's got a little bit of insulation that does help in cold weather, but mainly you want the air baffle to keep you off the ground. Uh, you know, it gets rid of stones and stuff like that underneath your tent. So, yeah. That's the main function. Pillow. And I doubt that I'm going to deploy the sheet, but I've got that if I need it. And that is home wherever I go. Good stuff. Saves you uh, 350 bucks a day. And that ain't chump change, kids. I'm going to bring my bag over here. Set up my abode for the evening. I didn't do my oil. I don't know if Ron did his oil. Do we know? No, I don't think so. Yeah, Ron was probably waiting on me. We never saw an easy uh, oil pan, but you know, I was busy. I didn't see it either. No, I can't. Oh, you did? Which one? The, the, the older lady. Yeah. What bike? Uh, S Max class. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, there was another one that needed help oil change tonight. I don't recall who it was. <clears throat> I hope they got it done. We can do them early in the morning. It's not a problem. It's a five, ten minute deal. Mine could probably wait. I'd rather not. I've got the oil. Oh, I need to bring my scoop. Okay, I have, I've ignored comments. Anyone that's still tuned in, I apologize so much. Uh, oh, my God. You guys can't see the mosquitoes. There's like 10 of them floating around me right now. Uh, I'm going to go. John, watching from Thailand. Sweet. Roy. Used to be a black belt. Cool. Yep. I'm second, Dan. Uh, taekwondo and Hapkido. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Neil, yeah, he is an early riser. Green tent is Neil's. You got it. The mosquitoes are insane out here, kids. I cannot tell you how many are floating. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to find out. We're pretty visible, so it's bound to attract attention. Uh, yep, I got the video cam on my bike, I think. I've got to go bring the scoot over here. We're going to find out. Uh, okay, we got lots of conversations going. I'm going to the last one. Uh, ah, the mosquitoes are insane out here. Don't forget to tap on the back of the head. <laughs> REI tent's great. Yep, I'm going to leave that one up. 
that is a worthy comment for the intermission. We've got 92 people watching. I apologize again for the intermission. I've got to go get my bike bring it over here. You gonna put your pin here or there? I think you should put it here. Why? Well, there's no no light right here. Right there? Yeah. Good light. Fall over, are you? Be good. Okay. PSA kids, no riding and drinking or drinking and riding. I went one block. That was crazy. What? You can try to put this in here? No, I don't know. Tyler, where'd you go? I was he, out there. he was talking over here. Yeah, I moved the bike over there, but tents should go in the shade. All right. Oh, you guys are going with me. How many 91 fortunate souls are traveling with a uh, slightly inebriated quasi after dark? Oh, my God. I talked to the guy just now when I went to get my scoot. And I rode drunk for the first time in my career across the parking lot. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> private property, law enforcement, piss off. Um, yeah, the guy that hit a deer today. He 
broke his collarbone. He's got his whole arm in a sling. And his scoot is missing the front fence. Oh, 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 here's the guy. Rider number? 82. 82. Handle his wax on the forum. Wax. Nice. I'm going to get over here out of the light. There we go. And collarbone? It's uh, broken. Fuck, man. I'm sorry. It happens. Uh, hopefully not. I almost completely nailed a deer center mass yeah. uh, coming down Los Alamos. I didn't even touch the brakes. I hit it full on. Oh, like, I thought shit. Like that, so. Shit. Not that bad. Could have been a lot worse. Could have snapped my neck or something terrible. So Broad daylight, though, right? Yeah, it was. Bike starts and runs. I bike starts and runs. The were jealous of putting corn out to bait that I think they deer did. into my path. Yeah. I can't prove it, but... Yeah. I heard don't tell the secrets. Don't 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 tell the secrets. Yeah, yeah. It takes it. It takes them longer to chew. So it's it's a delay tactic. It's a delay tactic, right? And cheddar cheese is the key. I caught it full stride, and then some dude came up. Oh man! I was sitting there. It was like kind of going around. Yeah. Like oh shit! Look at him with that deer. He's like. So you injured it badly enough that it was. Oh yeah, you couldn't get up and move. And so the Sunday uh, I was sitting there. It sucks. You got to do that. So it was. Yeah, I've had to put down cattle, dogs, deer. It, yeah, it's deer, the paramedics kept asking yeah, me it's not if, good. if I had passed out. I was like, no, I remember everything. And then turn toward the light. I'm, I, I, I hate to, you know, capitalize on your injuries. But no, it's fine. It's, it's appropriate. It's so years. hand is okay. Yeah, everything's it's just, fine. It's everything's just good. collarbone. Just a collarbone. It's collarbone. No shoulder problems. Everything's good. So. My knee's a little bit sore, but I don't have any road rash. I had the full body suit on, had an expensive helmet, which is thrown away now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe I'll frame it. But yeah. I'd, I'd like to see it. Do you still yeah, have it's it? It's still on the, on the bike. Take it's on the bike. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, want, I want to look at red, it. Red yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. If, if, if you rattle it, you'll hear something shaking around. So you're not ass wax? No. Okay, okay. Wax. There was another guy on the forums a couple of years ago that was ass wax. No. Yeah. Okay. Don't even know all right. him. All right, all right, all right. Just want to make sure. Sounds yeah. like a good dude, though. No, yeah, yeah. Good fun. So, Fuck yeah. political correctness. Uh, all right, guys, have a good night. I am so sorry for your fail. Right. Uh, you're out. Yeah, you're out. Yeah, yeah, not riding. Okay, so 25. He offered to let me go cut pick on the back of his. I told him, dumb and dumber style. If it gets cold, you can just pee. You can give him a reach around. You know, you keep it, keep it friendly. <laughs> dumb and dumber. That's only on one hand. So how am I supposed to hold on? 25, 25, 25. I'll be there. 25. All right, all right. Trooper, trooper. <laughs> We're a rough crowd, man. We don't pull punches. If you're playing this game, you better play for real. We don't fuck about. Yeah, that was the deer dude. Broke his collarbone, fucked his bike, and he's 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 like, yeah, 25. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I grew up jumping my bike off three story buildings and killing myself. Yeah. I saw yeah. the deer. Did you? Did you get pictures? That's morbid. I want pictures. Can you send me video and pictures? Video, I'm going to do a whole expose on it. And the lady that's doing the uh, documentary, she wants anything that we've got that she can include in the, the documentary film she's doing. It's going to be like a 90 minute feature film oh, kind of deal so cool so now hold that up again hold it up hold it elbow 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 oh that's yeah. right the rash <laughs> rash i'm trying to get the lighting good this oh, is not pro like video TV kids TV. what happened was, give us a play by play oh, um, what happened so besides the fucking pterodactyl us. mosquitoes out here oh, there were, god they're big oh. that first that first um dirt road on the second day and they went down in front of me and then in the sand pit which was nice and soft <laughs> and then i went down in the gravel okay um, i'm sure i would have went down the, the you said something pit. about uh fever though you're working yeah, with uh, so, you're fighting uh, fever so and infection I, yeah god you guys have no idea these mosquitoes are like it's a swarm it's huge they're they're pterodactyls they're pterodactyls, man. They're going to pick us up and take us away. Holy shit. There's like thousands of them out here. Okay. So, sorry. So, I went down in the gravel. Um, and so, I got cut up pretty bad. And I rode for two more days. Just, you know, like with open wounds. Open wounds, infection, <laughs> fighting fever. So, 
This is the kind of people yeah. that run Cannibal. Finally, I had like a really high fever. Oh, fuck, and I was mosquitoes. Like, <laughs> and I was like starting to feel like I was going to pass out. I was trying. Are you on antibiotics? Or? I am now okay. because I managed to go to the hospital in Havasu, get okay. my bike ready, okay. like right from the hospital, um, ride 10 hours, then my bike overheated, um, but I had to get to Miami. Um, or God damn. To Oklahoma Sorry, people. To oh. pick up that prescription. Like I had to get here yeah, to get the yeah, yeah. So I had to put the bike on the truck and. Uh, the last two hours, I didn't get to ride, and I felt like a total failure. But, no, no, no. But, Nobody <laughs> is a fail that does this yeah, event. You yeah, know, you need no, to know that. Know. Anybody you know that's got the balls, pardon the, you know, the yeah, genetic yeah. expression, but yeah. anyone that comes out here and does this yeah. is a winner. It doesn't matter if you finish, yeah. fail, lose, win, yeah. whatever. Anyone that's got the fortitude to see this through, sorry, everybody, I'm dodging <laughs> mosquitoes. God, they're brutal. <laughs> They're biting us everywhere. Uh, we are winners. It doesn't matter if you finish. Yeah. And, you and know. It's just, like, it's just so crushing to win the van. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they wrote, of course, right, van of shame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, van of shame. <laughs> no, no. Ride tomorrow. Forget the negatives. Oh, my God. The mosquitoes are brutal out here. Fucking rice fields. Pardon my French. Oh, my God. Literally, we are working with swarms of mosquitoes. There have got to be thousands and thousands just trolling, waiting for our blood. Damn vampires. Okay. Here you go. This is the rider that ate it this morning. Deer strike. Uh, there's a nice dent. I don't know if you guys are going to see that. Let me see if I can get the light to work in our favor. Nah, I didn't bring a flashlight. He's got a huge dent right here. Yo, oh, oh, hey, headlight, bring that back. No, no, come back. Damn. Uh, there's a huge dent right here from the deer. He said there's hair on here. Let's see if we can find deer hair. Deer hair? Hair, deer, hair, 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 hair. Deer hair. 82. He hit a deer, broke his collarbone, and uh, he's out. So I guess this bike is being shipped. Uh, it's going to go on the support truck. He's got a busted, you know, like my finger is in this lens. That shouldn't happen. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being very, very, very friendly with that deer or with that, uh, that signal. And I'm killing a mosquito on my arm. Sorry. Um, yeah. So this took a beating. Uh, he survived. Uh, deer was put down. No fender. Sans fender. Uh, big dent in the front. Busted side plastics here no signal oh my god there's like nine mosquitoes absolutely swarming me helmet he's got a lot of rash on this helmet I'm trying to get the lighting you guys need to leave a thumbs up leave a like subscribe oh my god i'm doing this for you guys i'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes it's brutal out here oh my god you have no idea like oh, oh i've got to give you oh I've got to give you a close-up of one of these bastards eating me right now. I'm losing blood as we speak. It's so unreal out here. Wait, wait, wait. Here comes one. Here comes one. Oh, look at this guy. They're huge. They're like pterodactyls. Aye. Anyway, he uh, he rashed up his helmet real good. That's that's a bad, bad spiral. He got a, a head bang. Oh, what? I'm losing this stuff. Something else fell out. There. Oh, Put it back over here. Yeah. So, poor guy. Deer are stupid. They're pretty. Quasi. Hey, hey, hey. It's Doug. Having fun. Oh, fuck. Mosquitoes. I'm done. Sorry, guys. I'm quitting. I'm throwing in the towel. These mosquitoes are kicking my ass. Oh, my God. I'm getting bitten all over. Ay, ay, ay. Rice fields from hell. Okay. Anyone that's been tuned in as long as I hope, this is the bike that someone was asking me two hours ago. This is a three hour, uh, what, 321. Someone asked if there was another trailer in the, in the uh, Cannonball. Yes, here, this. This is a trail tail with a Michelin. Uh, you guys can't see it, pardon. It's bad lighting, no video production skills. Trailtail.com built this trailer for this rider. 
uh, and I apologize, I don't have his rider number handy. Uh, he's got a Michelin tire on here, blah, blah, blah. That is a five-gallon aluminum fuel cell beneath the uh, insulation there and the you know mesh net, whatever. He has that plumbed in right here. Lighting is bad. Uh, I showed it, you know, uh, pre-cannonball. But there's a fuel line that goes up here, feeds the main tank. He's got a switch somewhere. I think it's down there. I don't recall. He's got a switch somewhere that feeds uh, the system, and that's his uh, status light right there, the green one, that tells him it's pumping. And he transfers from there to the main tank and keeps going. Doesn't need to stop. Sweet. Oh, God, mosquitoes. Hey! I'm not a wuss, but these mosquitoes are pissing me off. They're so bad. Rice patties and Grom. Grom. I'm so easily distracted. Yeah, the run by. All right. I've done my duty. I am cannonball videographer extraordinaire please leave a like leave a thumbs up i'm going to take you back to my tent just before i put on my skivvies which are under my clothes already i'm signing off i'll look at last minute comments before i sign off thanks for tuning in joining in the insanity and my inebriation <laughs> they're putting uh, lots of tequila in that uh that there margarita mix, kids. Holy shizzes. Wait. We've got a blue light. We've got a blue light. IT guys looking for power. What is this? That's a voltage meter. 12.9. You're low, sir. You need more blood pressure. <laughs> Welcome to Camp Kitchen. Neil, Tyler, food. There's another set of tools right there and some chips in here, man. There's eating implements here. Who it. wants to eat? Yeah, yeah, he's smacking mosquitoes. Fuck. I have two head nets. You guys want them? You need a hat, though. You need like a ball cap. Wow. My God, these mosquitoes are brutal. Rice patties nearby. Never a good combination. You are set up at Camp Zero. You can't see. Behind the camera, I, I'm counting right now. Six, seven, eight mosquitoes swarming right now. Oh, my God. What is this place? Dante Six Circle of Hell? Mosquito Heaven, huh? Mosquito Heaven. Welcome to Blabo. Yeah. If, if you... Uh, it's Bly... What, what is it? Blabo. Blytheville. Bly, Blyville? Blyville. You just got to blah. 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 It it's fucking blah, Arkansas. God, mosquitoes. Ugh. Blyville. They have uh, rice patties everywhere surrounding this place. Which means stagnant water. They hot. Jalapeno. It's jalapeno, kids. They got live jalapenos and mosquitoes here. <laughs> Don't you love quasi after dark? Hi. Good thing watching that out. That light point like that. Probably. I don't care. Too bad. Internet. Too bad. Yep. You guys signed on for this shit. You're still watching. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, hey, the camera went nappy. I don't know. Not a hundred plus. Really? No, 96, 96. I exaggerate. Sorry. Hello. Hello, 96. Say Hardcore. Anymore, right? all over. People from all over the world. This is camp. God, I'm trying to get the camera to stand up. There are so many mosquitoes out here. I can't tell you how brutal it is. We're fighting just to eat. They're eating us. We're eating chips. Who's winning? Who's winning? It's so crazy, man. Oh, my God. We taste better to them. 
Maybe we can eat, like, I don't know, garlic? Dude, you came over here that don't bother me at all. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm coaching free food. Just like a community meal. I asked you if you were hungry. You said no. Yeah, I'm not. These are so bad. They are bad. Fucking rice patties. Drinking, talking, getting in trouble. Ah, Stop. They're huge. They're like nickel size, man. What is that? I'm going to be anemic by the time I wake up in the morning. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to bed, dudes. Go. Escape. Save yep. yourself. Pretty going close. To 10 p.m. Save yourself, sir. I'm well, at 5, gone at 6. I'm going to get out early. Yeah, it's on natural. Yeah. What do you got? No, no, no. I've got, I've got to eat. What is it? Tick or pellet? Ah, tick or pellet. I don't pick. Excuse. Well, I know. It's not just tick. It's tick plus, but it does does everything. Tick plus. Yeah. There, there are more, more mosquitoes per capita than people here, by far. Where? Blabu? Here. Blabu. Right, right here. Ground zero. <laughs> Took the eyeballs out, did you? Where did my fart go? Where did you fart? You fart? My, my fart. My fart. I mean, my fart and fart, man. Yeah. I have no idea how well it works. We'll find out. They can just find me. Yeah, man, no problem. We got you back. That's right. We got you, man. We got right. you. You stand next to me just going, shut up. <laughs> no, I, I just, this is just shut up. <laughs> can you guys see this? The, the mosquitoes? Oh, my God. Yeah. But you did good. My coat. Nothing you can't come back from. Was that from the restaurant? Tomorrow we'll be in Rome, Georgia. Rome! Oh, not, not Italy. So you've been through there, I said. Yeah, I ran this whole day last fall. Yeah. After our, can our, uh, our meet? So do you, or when was it? No, no, it was before that. It was, Thanks it was for picking warm. us up, guys. Remember when it was warm? <laughs> like, no. It was before it was cold. That's when I did it. <laughs> I was too traumatized by the 28 degree temp. Yeah. I remember anything. <laughs> I'm going to look at comments. I don't know how many people are still inclined to watch this nonsense. 92 people. Ask nice. Places. What's name? Oh my God, you guys have no idea how bad the mosquitoes are. Rome. Rome. We run Oh my God! No, it's not. It's not the Mississippi River. It's the rice paddies out here. God, I've got so many mosquito bites on me right now. This very second. Oh my God! Yes, there are. You got it right. There's rice paddies everywhere. I filmed them on my way in. It was crazy. They had these huge irrigation channels with these big, uh, like fire hydrant things coming up over out of the ground, and they were just open and running. And they're flooding the fields. Oh my God! Mosquito heaven. Mosquitoes are winning. Ah, God, they're eating me. Uh, are in South Carolina? Yeah, not yet, not yet, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> late meal. You got it. Oh God, these mosquitoes suck. Full tilt, quasi. No, no, you miss a tilt. Tilt. Full tilt. As in, I'm tilting off my scales. I'm inebriated, sir. Not sloppy drunk, but man, they mix those uh, margaritas thick, let me tell you. Wait, wait, what did Tim say? Tim, uh, rice country. Yeah, you got that shit right. Oh, best luck. Thank you. Ah, God, John Tucker. Oh, I'm getting bit. You guys don't know what's happening behind the camera. Oh, didn't take me to dinner, Travis. Come on, man. I'm a good date. Come on. Come on. I give good foreplay. Oh, ah, these mosquitoes suck. What do you got? Knife? Go swoop in, grab something, run back. Mm hmm. I think they're drawn to the light. Oh my God. Thanks, jalapeno. Fuck, that's hot. Put some salsa in here, man. No, I just got a jalapeno. Thank you. I'm a pussy when it comes to all things spicy. And I just got a really, really potent jalapeno. Wow. 
it erased my sense of taste for the rest of the food. Woo! There was no Vespas, though. They were, what do you call them? There was oh, something else. I don't know. Some of the brand names. They looked like Vespas. The red one? Yeah. One of them blue? No. The blue one is a... Uh... No, 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 no. You're... Oh, no. Oh, uh, 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 no. Two stroke look like Vespas, but there's something else. No. Oh. I, I can't remember the name. There's a, a buddy. Buddy? 125, this blue that's running. And apparently it's still running good. I can't believe a two stroke can handle that. I, no, no, that's four. Look at 2000. The two strokes are the old uh, Vespas. They're still, who, who They're still that, running. Who's yeah. that girl that was running next to Good luck with soft seas. Uh, Gold Pam. Gold Pam was running in 2018. She was following that lady. It's not two stroke. Yeah, I don't know. Anybody that runs a two stroke on the highway, hats off, man. Hats off. I wish you ran the whole event every time you put gas. All got to get the oil out. You know, mm -hmm. you got to do the whole thing. But she made, I think she made the whole thing in 18. Yeah. Two Sorry, everyone. I'm chewing and losing blood. 85. <laughs> 85 people still in. I'm losing blood by the moment. <laughs> you got it. Thanks, Joker. Tim, rice patties, you got it right. Hobo food. No, 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 this is, this is in style. They bought this shit from the restaurant. It's good. Quite good. But Neil is an excellent camp fajita cook. I can't sing this guy enough praises. No, it should work. Full tilt, quasi. <laughs> you got it, Roy. Preston, uh, are in South Carolina. No, not there yet. Mosquitoes are definitely winning. Low flooded rice field. Yeah, we got it. Uh, they're not. These are old. I'm sorry. I'm going to current. Uh, Dr. Someone listed running a 124. Okay, I don't know. About to look at that. Yeah, mosquitoes are munching us while we're munching chips. It's crazy. Oh, my God. I'm going to have so many mosquito bites in the morning. Chip. A cautionary statement. Did you read that? No. I don't care. Cancer rat. Yeah, yeah. I'm a rat. Use eye protection. I for Yeah, it's got that. Playing this product. Ah, I'm I'm blind. <laughs> What do you want? Where do you want it? Just spray it right in my eyes. <laughs> you don't want it on your arms? No, right in the eyes. My eyes are itchy. Put it there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that your pork? I don't know. I'm annoyed they charged me $17 for a fucking margarita. Oh, I'm lit. I'm lit. I'll, I'll give testimony there. but the whole thing? Yeah, but seventeen dollars, really? Jesus, I gotta have a case of beer for that. California prices. Yeah. Are you gonna charge me emission taxes for everything I fart out? Last time I stayed here, I went there Nate. You've been here before? Yeah. Oh. I stayed over there. In the hotel and the I got a margarita. Uh -huh. Came out. Some woman came up. I said, "You want half a margarita?" Hey, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, yeah. anybody watching? Do you remember what I said Ron's room was? I knew to get him his room key back. <laughs> I've got it. That was my ransom for doing the damn margarita. Here's Ron's room key. Room key he said room. two. Oh, 232, 264. God, I don't know. Just go to the second floor and start banging the doors, man. That'll go over well. Yeah. Just start <laughs> holding it next to the door, see if it opens. Hey, is Ron in there? The Walk in, see when someone's sitting on the shitter. Did you run the last no. No, he didn't. No, you did. Uh, trying to go to the end, everyone. We got 85 people watching the stupidity. Thank you for tuning in. Leave a like, thumbs up, subscribe. He was here. No, Da Vinci's in. He was here. I saw him doing, uh, you know, face to face with somebody else. I talked to Da Vinci earlier. No, yeah. I'm gonna try this again. Neil is the man, and he said, "See how bright it gets." Oh, God, these mosquitoes suck. 
said he had a Vespa beater or S Max beater. Yeah, yeah, SH one fifty. Yeah, he said run that. He says it's too easy. And oh my god, that's more getting eaten. Yeah, easy. yeah, but I've got his key. I need it. I, I want to give it. Ah, two six two. Exactly. Thanks. Bad. Wild cherry needs an oil change. Yeah. I'll go look for wild cherry. Yeah. Hey, Travis. Uh, Ron's room key. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not a swinger. I ain't doing that. I I don't bat for. <clears throat> I don't bat for that team. Well, you know it's hard. We can just time to the tree. Read them. Four to five regular. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was thick, but I wouldn't say seventeen bucks thick. <clears throat> ah, God, these mosquitoes. Uh, Heritage Hill. Indian made clone of ventured. Uh, Port of the U.S. is both cool. Steel bodies are cool. Yeah. Two thirty-four. Two thirty-four. Oh god, the mosquitoes are eating me. I've got so many bites on me, man. Two sixty-two. Two thirty-four. I got numbers everywhere. Uh, Neil is the man. Dang, you got that right, Conrad. Algae mosquitoes. No, they're they're fucking. They like they like quasi blood. Is that navy piece of shit or not? Navi is a piece of shit. Everyone watching, if you want quasi after dark, unfiltered opinions, Navi is a fucking chunk of trash. And he gave one to somebody. I gave one away, but I paid for it. I paid three grand for it almost. It's not that bad if you fix the carburation issues, but with the carburation issues, it makes it really a pain in the ass. Yeah. Now, Tyler, where's my finger? Oh, on camera. There's my finger. Tyler Zamdrang on YouTube, he owns a Navi and he loves it, but he doesn't have the carburation issues that I do. They're they're finicky at best. They're annoying. Uh, Dr. Hayden, what is that? Twenty twenty one. I missed it. What am I talking about? Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking. Ah, oh, God, Kevin. Sure, I want to invent the supercut because he thought the Vespa sounded annoying. Yeah, that was part of it. But he wanted something that everyone could ride. It was an everyone, simple people vehicle. And his, if I read the stuff, you know, the history correctly, he said that he wanted anyone to be able to ride it with one hand. And that included people carrying cups of fucking noodles. And this is quasi after dark, so yes, there are expletives. Straight. You could basically ride this thing with one hand and never clutch because you're holding something in your other hand. So that encourages bad riding habits. So Shiro Hondo was a, a an absolute genius, but that's a bad idea. It resulted in a fantastic vehicle that sold more units. Ah, pardon eating alive here. Uh, it sold more units than all other machines ever in recorded history. But, yeah, it's a, it's a bad idea. Ah, God. We're getting eaten alive, dude. We are absolutely getting eaten alive. Oh, I'm trying to get to the bottom. John, hey, you're still in. We got 77 people watching this nonsense. We're losing viewers constantly with the cursing, I'm sure. Uh, genuine 110 Rattler, two smoke, dependable. Yeah. Well, try running it at highway speeds for extended periods. Let me know how that goes. They tend to soft seas. Conrad. Hey, buddy. Hey, man. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Super Cub, amazing backstory. Yeah. The Super Cub really is responsible for the entire U.S. motorcycle market. Period. Done. Game over. That's it. Look up Super Cub and you will understand how motorcycling evolved in the USA. If it wasn't for Honda's, you meet the nicest people on Honda campaign and the Super Cub. Motorcycling was on a drastic decline. I mean, a 100% cancel culture decline back in the 50s because it was only the bad boys and the Harleys and the BSAs and stuff like that that rode them. And beyond that... Nobody liked motorcycles, so Honda had to revitalize it, and they are responsible for the whole U.S. motorcycle market, 100%. Two smoke. That's it, man. I love two smokes. They're great. They're just a pain in the ass to maintain on the highway. 
60 and 64. Nice. Uh, rolling wrench. Cool. Y'all look at that. Uh, rolling wrench is interesting. So, Travis, on your way home stop on my bucket list, quasi camp. Shit, man. Cavett, Travis, let me know where you are. Send me an email. There's too much going on on uh, YouTube for me to track. Sorry, I've got the hiccups. I'm smacking mosquitoes. Um, shoot me an email. Quasimotard at gmail.com and let me know what you've got in mind. Uh, we might camp in your backyard. That would be cool. Absolutely cool to get you on camera for the second time after the uh, what was Barber Small Board. So, yeah. Most excellent. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sawyer Picard and Insect Repellent. Go through a can each year in Houston. Yes. Hey, neighbor. You're from Houston. Nice. Yeah, I use, uh, you know, the normal stuff, deep, off, whatever. Uh, but I've also got the, uh, God, what is it? Uh, the shit you put on camping gear. I'll think of it. Give me a minute. I'll, I'll find out. Oh, mosquitoes are even on my phone. God. It's brutal out here, guys. You have no idea. Indian-made clone of Indian Vespa, Stella, imported U.S., two-stroke, four-stroke. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, six bears. Hey, man. Um, yeah, we go everywhere. Camping, doesn't matter. Uh, God, oh, mosquitoes. This is all for you, people. I'm only on here getting, eating alive for you. Leave a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, visor up tonight. Bee flu. Yeah, I had a, uh, a yellow jacket in my helmet <clears throat> earlier. I got it on camera, I think. Uh, yeah, I was, I had a hitch rider, you know, hitchhiker. Illegal stowaway, freaking yellow jacket, and I got him out of my helmet before he stung me, which is a bonus for me. They love me. They love to sting me. Permethrin. Yes, you got it, Mr. Somebody. Permethrin. And the stuff I use is from Sawyer, I believe, if I'm right. Uh, it's a, a giant squeezy, squeezy, squirty bottle. Uh, permethrin. Oh. Okay, fresh jar out of the woods. Moonshine. Oh, damn. We might get stupid. We might go blind, Travis. I don't know. You trying to blind us so we can't do the cannonball? Come on, man. Be nice. Be nice. Robert. Honda 250R. We used to flat track those. Man, that was some fun days right there. Flat tracking with uh, slicks on the back. Running those things. Full tilt boogie. Love it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. it tinnitus, yeah. I, I know it's from all my two-stroke days, but man, the 250 uh, Rs and then the Suzuki quad racers. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Fun, and they killed my hearing. Uh, still on the road. Okay. I'll look for her. I was stung at Tiddler's. Yeah, I was stung on the Cannonball, too, man. I pick up Yellow Jackets. I'm a magnet for those things. Doug, plan to run to Key West. I love that. That's a great idea. Kevin, how about scooter CVT that uses steel instead of rubber drive? Uh, yeah, but then you get into much more difficult metallurgy. Uh, and really, that requires big company assets to do the, the number crunching on it and figure out if their materials are worth it or not. Uh, as far as uh, wear characteristics and whatnot. And for example, CVTs in production cars, like the Nissan Leaf and stuff like that, those are metal CVT belts. And it requires a whole lot of engineering to make sure that those things work for 80,000 or 100,000 miles. Rubber CVT belts are a softer durometer, so you don't really need to worry about the metal side of things so much. And that's why Honda just rates the belts at, you know, 12,000, 14,000, 18,000 miles. If you put a metal CVT belt in there with the elliptical uh, curve metal bends and all the stuff that involves, it, it's, it's a lot of science. I've gone down that rabbit hole. Um, you need a lot more durable materials to withstand that kind of abrasion and resistance and longevity. So... It, long story short, you got to do a lot of R and D, and I don't think it would ever meet 
the need or you know it wouldn't meet muster for cost analysis on uh, scooters and motorcycles so yeah a bit more tuning and maintenance uh, careful with your mixture you can run highway speeds yeah well until you shut the throttle down you know that right I'm just a joker I'm not I'm not digging you but I'm I'm a race pro I've been down this path <laughs> it's <laughs> it's old territory for me uh, the problem is when you decelerate on a two two smoker. Oh, I'll say that right. It's a two smoker. When you close the throttle, you go lean, and that's what causes your cylinder to seize a lot of times. So you've got to have oil injection to keep that thing lubricated while you're off the throttle. Because when you close the throttle body and or your venturi or whatever, then your main jet isn't pulling fuel through that thing anymore, and you don't have the oil to lubricate the cylinder. You end up with problems. That's why Yamaha and even Hondas and stuff like that, they put oil injection pumps on there to give you lubrication based on engine RPM, not on throttle position or, you know, Venturi effect. So, yeah, engineering. Again, it gets deep. I've been in racing all my life. It, 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 I could go into the details, but it bores most people and they turn off the channel. Robert, hey, man. Uh, axles on slicks. I missed that. I don't know what we're talking about. Figure eight. Yeah. Yeah. Ice racing's fun, man. I was in Oklahoma. I did that shit. Sheet metal screws and knobbies. Good stuff. Ow. God, these mosquitoes suck. Birmingham sits here. Uh, ah, God. Gotta turn off that. Uh, Ronald Rumpf made it. Yes. Yeah. 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 We helped him last night. We put in a, uh, a uh, new belt in a CVT, but his clutch is shit. So he's fixing that tomorrow. Uh, Ronald is a pro. MMA fighter, boxer, and uh, he's retired now, but uh, he's got an interesting backstory. Go check him out on Facebook, Ronald Rumpf, and the last name is spelled R-U-M-P-F. And uh, he's a neat guy. He's traveling the whole country on scooter. He started the Cannonball with $700. That's it. And that was given to him by donation. So go check him out. Give him a donation. Yeah. Yeah, Doug, Ronald is here. Yep. Doug Bergman 200. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is the Bergman 200 costs like 7,000 bucks and change. It's expensive. And I'm getting, I'm losing blood. I'm losing blood. I gotta get more food and get in my tent. Mileage? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe 280, right? Uh, probably closer to 300. Yeah, he's on the other side of your shop, so. Oh, my God, guys. I've got to be half a pint down on blood. Yeah, a blood's still left. I don't know. All right. On the border? You going home with me? I'm shutting down the stream. Here's home. There's 70 diehards in here. I do appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Cannonball. Quasi after dark. This is real life. This is how shit happens on the road. No filters. Real, real motor camping. Real living on the road. I'm climbing in my tent. I'm throwing in the towel. I quit. I'm half inebriated. I can still speak. I can still walk. So I'm not really trashed. But those margaritas don't dick around. You want to try to get me on camera? I have no idea if I'm on camera. I'm taking off my boots. This is official. It's quasi lights out after dark. Oh my God. Mosquitoes are flying in here as I speak. Ah, oh, dipping this shit up. Oh my God, these mosquitoes. Oh. I've got bites all over my arms, my face, my neck. Oh. Come here, boot. I don't want ants in my boot. Come here. Oh, I threw it. That's how angry I am. Oh, these mosquitoes suck. When I saw the rice fields, I knew there was nothing but chaos involved for me. Oh, the rice fields mean hell. Oh, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Cannonball Stealth Camping, Bandit Camping, next to the hotel. I'm no stranger. I'm sweaty. It's hot. I'm bitten to hell. 
I've gone to sleep. Night.